you. I love this part because we get to connect with you. I was hoping you would say I'm the flower, but anyway, I'll take that. Oh, well, listen, for today's social media posts, we're asking you the question. Spring is all about new beginnings and transformations. What are your goals for this new month and new season? Share your voice notes with us. That number is 063-408-8863. We would love to hear from you. And of course, we will be playing those voice notes throughout the show. So get on in, send us those new goals, and we will definitely be sharing your answers with us. But it's time for us to get started with the morning, getting into those headlines. Here's Cole Wasty. Thank you so much, Zoe. Let's get into your national headlines first. The Health Professions Council of South Africa says it's concerned about the escalating number of fake doctors around the country. Evidence before the Kimberley Magistrates Court has revealed that a 38-year-old bogus doctor accused of sexually assaulting a 17-year-old girl is not registered with the Health Council. The bogus doctor allegedly assaulted the teenage girl in his surgery. Here's another sexual assault case against him dating back to April. The Health Council's Christopher uh, Swane said the increasing number of unregistered health practitioners was of great concern. Now, as Women's Month concludes, the National African Federated Chamber of Commerce and Industry in the Eastern Cape held a conference in Kabecha to view the challenges faced by women in business. Many have reported that they are having a hard time recovering from the impact of COVID-19. The conference aimed at celebrating Women's Month under the theme Strengthening Economic Recovery and Reconstruction, Resuscitating the Business Space. The Deputy Minister of Trade, Industry and Economic Development, Nomalongelo Gina, says the objective was to uplift women and ensure the equality in the business sector. Now on to international news, lawyers of a veteran Kenyan politician, Raila Odinga, uh, who is challenging uh, the presidential election results, have alleged that, uh, or alleged that there was systematic rigging in favor of the winning candidate, William Ruto, uh, citing inconsistencies in the final tally. Odinga's lawyers made their submission during yesterday's Supreme Court hearing of their request to nullify Ruto's victory, citing gross mismanagement of the election. They informed the court that the transmission system for the result forms was compromised through unauthorized access by known and unknown persons. Now, the funeral of lost Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev, who has died at the age of 91, will take place in Moscow on Saturday. The ceremony will be held in the Moscow Hall of Columns, historically used for funeral services of high officials, including Joseph Stalin uh, back in 1953. The ceremony will be open to all and he will be laid to rest on the same day. Officials have yet to announce whether he would have a state funeral and if Vladimir Putin, their president, would be in attendance. Now, concerns about mental health have grown in recent years with the situation exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic. Cape Mental Health, a leading non-profit organization which provides free mental health care services and interventions, is tackling this problem head on by, well, flying a kite. That's right. Cape Mental Health is encouraging children and youth to hashtag fly your dreams at the 28th Cape Town Kite Festival next month to raise funds and promote mental wellness. According to the nonprofit, investment in children and youth in particular helps prevent mental illness that can progress into adulthood. Young, old and everyone in between are invited to fly or view kites at Malpo Strand Beach in Cape Town on the 9th of October in support of the initiative. If you're in the, well, not in the area, you can visit the Cape Town Kite festival website to see how you can make a contribution well on that note that's a wrap of news for now another update in one hour let's take a peek at the sport here's graham Oh, thank you so much, Carl. We can start getting excited as we edge closer towards the weekend. Rugby on the cards. Andre Pollard, Lucania Am will not be involved. They'll be returning to their clubs for further medical assessments. That was after being ruled out of Saturday's next clash against Australia in Sydney. So both players suffering knee injuries against the Wannabes in Adelaide last weekend. That prompted the decision to send them back to the Leicester Tigers and Sharks, respectively, for further medical advice. The Elton Yankees and Peter Steph to Toy will remain in camp and they're expected to recover cover sufficiently from their injuries for the last two matches in the championship. So Jacques Deleba said no replacements will be called up at this stage. Then exciting times in cricket. Cricket South Africa's new T20 tournament finally has a name in the form of SA20, which is set to start in mid-January next year. The league's draft will take place on the 19th of September and fill out the six teams with 17 players, 10 of which will be local and seven international from a match day perspective. The 
teams will then follow the international standard of seven local and four foreign players in the format. And the SA20 has already attracted the likes of Liam Livingston, a specialist in the space, Joss Butler, the big hitter, Jason Holder, Rashid Khan, and the great all-rounder Moen Ali to add to the list of world-class contracted Proteus players as well. Going to be a fantastic development tool for cricket. Then this young man is on fire. Erling Haaland continued his blistering start to his Manchester City career by scoring another hat-trick inside 38 minutes as the Premier League champions smashed newly promoted Nottingham Forest 6-0. So Haaland has now scored nine goals in five league games since joining City from Borussia Dortmund and has now got back-to-back hat-tricks after netting three in Saturday's win over Crystal Palace as well. Then goals from Gabriel Jesus and Gabriel Martinelli. They owned Arsenal a 2 win over Aston Villa. Jesus really finding his home there. That is, the Gunners kept up their 100% record in the start of the Premier League season. Then Liverpool, they needed a 98th minute winner from Fabio Carvalho to beat Newcastle 2-1. While well, Spurs and West Ham, they played out to an entertaining one-all draw. Then on to tennis, former champion Andy Murray looked fantastic, reaching the U.S. Open third round for the first time in six years with a four-set win over American wildcard Emilio Nava. So Murray, who won the U.S. Open back in 2012, came out on top 5-7, 6-3, 6-1 and 6-love. Then Rafa Nadal, Diego Schwartzman, Denis Shapovalov as, uh, also through to the next round as well. And then in the women's side of the draw crowd, favorite Coco Goff overcame Elena Gabriela Russe, 6-2-7-6 to progress. Madison Keys and Oncio Bure also through. Oncio looking very strong. And third seed Maria Sakari unfortunately dumped out. So we'll certainly continue to watch that space. But that's where we leave the sport for this hour. Let's bring you up to speed on the weather. Thank you, Graham. And let's start off with some news from the Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality. It's warning residents that the potential for day zero still looms large in the metro. This despite some excellent rainfall in the main catchment area in the Langerkloof area in August, which has seen the city's main supply dams recover to an average of 16,34% capacity. Water and Sanitation Director Barry Martin says the bay's water sanitation, in fact, the water situation remains constraint. He reminded residents that the city is still under significant water restrictions implemented by the National Department of Water and Sanitation. These restrictions limit how much water the municipality can draw from the system. Martin says, and I quote, we all need to continue to reduce water consumption by adhering to 50 litres per person per day. Currently, our seven-day average is 274 megalitres per day, which is 44 megalitres day, uh, per day over the target. Now we are also facing an increased level of vandalism which affects electrical supply to reservoirs negatively impacting our ability to produce consistent supply for all. And that is the end of the quote. Well from your news we now turn our attention to your sunrise views as we kick off the 1st of September. First up Faithline Low sent us this stunning orange view of her view and this is out in George as the sun begins to rise. Then Heine Lisa sent us this stunning tangerine lit sky in Bloemfontein with the street lights still lighting up the sky. Mark shared this blazing view of someone catching their morning run in Puckelstorp in George. Owetu sent this cloudy sky filled photo with pinks and purple hues from Port Shepston. And finally this stunner was sent in by Eunice featuring these beautiful lions catching the first ray of the sun and that's in Rand Park Ridge. Look at that. Some beautiful wildlife on your screen right now. If you have a sunrise view that you would love to share with us, send those photos to our WhatsApp line. That number is 063-408-8863. Let's get into your temperatures. If you're in Polokwane, a low of 5 and a high of 22 for today. Mbombela, 723. Pretoria, 922. Johannesburg, 9 with a high of 21. Mahiking, 824. Klagstorp, 825. 
If you're in Kimberley, 12's your low, 25 your high. Bloemfontein, 5 reaching a high of 23. It's sunny in Richards Bay, 14 with a high of 22. Peter Maritzburg, 10 reaching a high of 24. It's partly cloudy in Durban today, 14 is your low, 20 your high. Mtata, 12 reaching a high of 27. East London, 18, 23. Craddock, 11 with a high of 26. Taberga, 15 reaching a high of 24. Rain can be expected in George today. 11 is your low, 29 your high. Cape Town, 12 with a high of 21. Worcester, 7, 28. Sutherland, 8 with a high of 23 with some strong wind expected. And Uppington, your low for today is 17, your high 31 degrees Celsius. Well, that's where I leave your traffic for now on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Oh, thank you so much, Zozo. A very important discussion. We're going to bring the panel in. We are going to be looking into suicide at the moment. Yeah. Um, over the last few weeks, we brought you some very alarming stats. And believe me, they jump up as we move into spring, strangely enough. But there's obviously something about this time of the year that destabilizes us. So please, we're going to open the lines for you to connect with us. If you are struggling with something right now and need to talk, need to connect, need that human connection, we are that. 063-408-8863. We'd love to hear from you this morning. Drop us a voice note. And don't forget to Five second game inspired by spring days to so stay right there. Do you feel good, Rick? Down. Spring is glorious. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Oh, bless you, man. Oh. Bless you. Ah, unless you suffer from allergies. But that has all changed with allergics and non-drowsy and the wonders of spring competition on Espresso this September. <laughs> so stand a chance to win a daily giveaway Monday to Friday of a 2,000 Rand Take Lot voucher to spend on the best outdoor living gear. I love that. So answer the weekly question on the Espresso Facebook or Twitter pages and include that all-important Allergics ND. The competition runs from the 1st till the 28th of September and those terms and conditions do apply. Good luck and bless you, man. Testing one to three. Perfect. Are you ready? Idorinian. 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 Thank you. Lovely to meet you, Idorinian. Mike Nine. My name is Graham. Okay. Bruce, you have a microphone? Mike, check. One, two, one, two. Perfect. 30 seconds. Okay. Fabio. 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 Testing one, two, three. Perfect. Fabio. 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 Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining the conversation this morning. We are going to be bringing in an amazing panel of people to broach something that is, I know, very difficult, but something essential to address after a cold and, I think, pretty depressing winter. Most of us look forward to shedding the layers, um, heading outdoors, freeing ourselves, enjoying the burgeoning joys of the warmer weather. But there is a cold fact that many not, uh, may not be aware of. That's right. For more than 50 years, it's been proven that people attempt and die by suicide far more often in the springtime. Wow. Now, obviously, suicidal thoughts and attempts are, you know, it's grave concern at any time of the year. But just as we worry about the same as we worry about asthma during the pollen season and periods, and it is also we encourage to be more vigilant for the suicidal thinking and behavior as the season changes. And that is exactly why World Suicide Prevention Day is so important. And today we decide discuss the facts with the panel of experts that includes psychiatrist Dr. Akpabio as well as Ak 
actor and performer Bruce Feldman and spokesperson for the South African Depression and Anxiety Group Senzikile Shongwe joining us in studio. And we encourage you at home to please join in, be part of this conversation. We would love to hear your thoughts, perhaps experiences with someone that's been suicidal. You can WhatsApp us on 063-408-8863. Um, thank you so much for joining us at home and to all of you. Um, I know it's a deep breath before you have a conversation like this. I would imagine this is the space that you guys are playing in such a vitally important day. A bit shocking when we hear the statistics. And I suppose it stands to reason that this is a time of the year where the expectation is to feel amazing. We should feel fantastic. It's the best time of our lives. And then you start comparing yourself to everyone else, maybe how much you've lost over the last few years or haven't been able to recover after losing it all to COVID. And one by one, the dominoes start to fall yes. and we feel that weight. I'm going to say it right now. And we're going to keep these details up for the rest of today's show. The SA Depression and Anxiety Group are there. All the time someone can speak to you. So maybe Senza Kilia, I should start with you. Mm. Why are we seeing a spike at this time of the year? Why is this traditionally such a dark period? And you know, it's, it's, it's really weird that because spring is supposed to be a good time and oh, a happy time, life. why would somebody that um, struggles with depression actually get worse during this time? Um, and this is because because everyone is so excited and happy and planning um, to go on holidays. People are partying, people are getting out there wearing bright colors. A person that is actually struggling with mental health related illnesses feels the opposite. It's quite a lot of mm -hmm. pressure and it's quite a lot to get out of them to actually be out there and do all of those things so they kind of feel like they're out of place they kind of feel like they are out of their comfort zone as well and days in summer and spring are quite longer and mm. you know in winter you go to bed quicker and when you struggle with depression you always want to be cushioned up in bed yeah, and in the wagons. Yeah. exactly so in summer the days are quite longer so it means that you have to actually stay and talk to people and chat and be outside for a longer period of time, which is something that you would rather avoid if you are depressed. That's so scary and it's yeah. not something I ever thought about and it's, I think that's why it's so important for us to have these conversations. Mm -hmm. Now Bruce, you have a very long resume. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is in, it's incredible. You're an accomplished actor, model, performer, author, Mr. South Africa finalist, but it didn't come without challenges. Mm -hmm. when, when you were growing up, I mean, today is you know a day where we're putting the spotlight on suicide awareness. Was suicidal thoughts something that ever crossed your, your mind? Yeah, I must say it, it, it had crossed my mind. I've been raised uh, in a black family, being the firstborn, and in an uh, uh, absent father, suicide definitely crossed my mind. You know, you are in constant battles because you forever want to do better. You forever want to push yourself and you don't always achieve the dreams and the goals that you set for yourself mm. and what society has placed for you. So therefore, when you, when you f fail or when you feel that you're lacking in uh, some aspect of your life, you then drop back, which leads to depression, which then puts suicidal thoughts in one's mind. So mm. it definitely, yeah, I had suicidal thoughts in my mind. And then this little cycle starts repeating yeah. itself. And uh, so have I. And, and this is the crazy thing, and maybe, Doc, you can help me understand what's going on in the mind here, because I've, I've said this to myself many times. I know that I won't. Mm -hmm. I know that I won't go that far, okay, because I've got kids, I've got people who rely on me, I've got family, I've got all of these things, but it's still there. Yeah. It would be great to not hit one of those major challenges, one of those dark moments, and have that thought there, like, okay, well, there's always an out. But there is a reason why we reach for that. And certainly in our darkest hours, why do we contemplate suicide? What is going on in our mind when we reach for that, that extreme? Um, well, it could be varieties of things. So suicide often happens in the context of intense emotional distress, as you've mentioned. And in those periods, there can be thoughts of hopelessness, feelings of worthlessness, guilt, frustration, intense pain, and just not feeling like there's any way out. And sometimes suicide seems to be the only way to end the suffering that you're going through. But it's also good that we keep in mind that suicide can also occur in other contexts, such as um, with the background of substance use, yeah. mm. psychosis in response to hallucinations or delusions, or sometimes in spring with the flare up of bipolar manic episodes, there can be reckless behavior and that's how some people end up succumbing to suicide. 
I get that, because the world kind of feels manic at the moment. It kind of yeah. feels like everything has gone crazy a little bit. And now we move into a new season, and I get that. I get it. Everyone should be feeling happy, but our reality hasn't quite shifted. We're still dealing with so much right now. Mm. And if you are feeling like the walls are caving in in this instant, speak to someone. The South African Depression and Anxiety Group is there. They've got amazing amazing human beings people sitting there ready to talk to you who are trained who will say the right things and will help you take that first step so please use those details and drop us a uh, whatsapp voice note if you can if you want to share your perspective 063 408 we'd love to hear from you We'll continue that very, very pertinent conversation in the next couple of moments. And I think it's important at this juncture to tell you that you are not alone. And one thing that will remind you about that is spending time with friends. So it is a time for another round of the five-second game. And because it's the first day of spring, our theme is all about the seasons. And our contestants are my friends. We've got Graham and Zoe, who are about to take the Yay. seats and get ready for this particular <laughs> competition, where one of them will win one of these incredible... Wow. In beautiful, amazing, and sensational Omar Rusk's yum, yum, trophy prizes. Dreams. And I've got a caramel on dreams there, and I've got the normal original. Of course, the you can't well. go wrong the with the, oh, yeah. the, the buttermilk rusks. All right, so. How are you feeling today, Zoe? Are you, are you in that insanely competitive, I'm going to like crush you mood, or are you in like a warm and friendly mood? Let me see, hold on. She's going to crush, crush you. me, yeah. Yep. yeah. It's, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know the looks. I know the looks. Sorry, it's just, you're going to get crushed. But, okay, so season-inspired, uh, I flipped a coin. Okay. Uh, and it uh, turns out, Graham, you're going first. Uh, That's always good if you go first if you're going to get crushed. Set the tone. So let's go. The first okay. one is, right, five-second game. Time on. Name three months in winter. Um, May, June, July-ish? No. Ish? Now, the June in June, the solstice for winter is there on the 20th of June in 2022. I checked. What do you think, Zoe? June, July, August. There we go. I'm just because if spring is September, we're backwards, Graham. I'm just yeah. saying. By the way, do you know what I'm doing? I'm, I'm stoking a competitive fire. <laughs> All right. I'm not even going to make it to Zoe, round two. I think I should. Never. Okay, I'm ready. She's going to highlight you now. <laughs> right, let's go. Zoe, name three public holidays in December. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, Reconciliation Day, Christmas Boxing Day. That's it. Wow. That's three. That's done. Thank you. Sure. Perfect. Graham, name three things that happen in spring. Ah, oh, you sneeze a lot, you <laughs> get outdoors, you uh, spring clean your house. There we go, done. Love it. <laughs> Zoe, name three spring box. Spring box. Ah, Sia Kulisi, Dwayne for Merlin, and, 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 and Ebony, it's a bit, it's a bit. <laughs> it was then. after the time, according to the, <laughs> just, please don't hurt me, thank you. But it was still <laughs> great, it was still a great <laughs> answer, Zoe, I don't want to miss it. No, it's a great answer, don't hurt me. It was still awesome, it was still awesome. Box, and I'm, I went to like flower boxes, and I'm like, huh? And then I realized, no, 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 we play. Yeah, it's the way people. you ask the question. <laughs> oh, she's coming after you. <laughs> I feel like Nottingham Forest right now, right? So, Graham, name three games to play in the pool. Ah, uh, Marco Polo, Polo, or Hide and Seek. <laughs> hide and Seek? <laughs> what? You and you know what? Us. If you play That's Polo funny. in a pool, I'm sorry for the horses. <laughs> they have to. <laughs> so, I'm very sorry. Right, next up, Zoe. <laughs> name. Sorry, small moment. What's a polo? <laughs> no, but, but those of us that are cool, we don't even have to say the full name. We like polo. You know, polo. I'm, I'm, it's I'm like picturing polo, right. those poor horses in the pool while you're trying to go. <laughs> the horses stand on the outside. You know, they walk you along. They pull you and you're in the water. Zoe, name three types of flowers in South Africa. Protea, feinbos, and eucalyptus. <laughs> eucalyptus flowers. Hold on. I love it. Is the eucalyptus not an Australian <laughs> flower, mate? It's sort of. It's currently I in my house. It's in South Africa. It's an invader. Look, it is. It's an invader <laughs> species. Yes, it's, how do you win? See, this is how it started, eh? Never this is how. Graham. You didn't, you didn't say South African flowers. You said in South Africa. And how many koala bears <laughs> must die, Zoe, so that you can have eucalyptus plants in your house? This, how this many? This is what happened. <sighs> Graham, dare ask, name three things you can do in the sun. Ah, oh, man, you can tan, you can plant eucalyptus trees, and you can drink soft drinks. <laughs> because they are in South Africa. <laughs> Love, Zoe. <laughs> Name three ways to cool down. You can swim, you can run through the sprinkler, or you can drink tea. Perfect. Yeah. Love it. That's true. Graham, name three fashion items you can wear in summer. Oh, a bikini, a speedo, and a hat. 
<laughs> I can wear a bikini if I want to. Well done. Okay. Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> Do it, Graham. You're gonna win. Right, so name three things or places you can spring clean. Ah, your cupboards, your garage, and your lounge. Done. Nice. Now I need to go to the independent auditor to tell me who wins this round. <laughs> Don't laugh evenly like that. Yes. Thank oh you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. Th thank you so much. They say it's a draw. I need to give you a final you round. You can have the oh minutes one. Gosh. Thank you. It's, it's a final round. All right. Are you ready? Who's okay. starting off with the round? Let's go with uh, Graham. Okay, I thought so. Okay. Name three things you can take to the beach. Ah, oh, beach ball, a dog, or yourself. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm not going to spit you guys. I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> so. Yes. Right. Name three things you need to wear in the sun. Uh, sun hat, sunscreen, and lip ice. Perfect. It's, hold on. S still a draw, which means, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever, oh, it is a proper I, draw I in the five-second game. Congratulations. <laughs> Wow. I just want to thank my team. It's been an amazing performance. Yeah. I'll go with the Yum Yum Caramel Dreams for sure. I love Aww, it. Aw, thank you, G-Man. Yeah, but you know, in this case, I I'm sorry, G. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in this, in this case, this guy, you're going to need some eucalyptus <laughs> to rub on your wounds. Because that's the way when you play against Zoe, you lose one all. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> right, join, join us again tomorrow for another fun round of the five-second game and the announcement of this week's winner to see who is going to walk away with 2,000 Rand in cash and the Omar Rusks. Temper, nice. it might just be you. Definitely will be Zoe then. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so it's gonna rock up at your house. <laughs> There's more in every dip with Omar. Your generosity can ignite a love for reading amongst our youth. Share your homegrown story. See Cadbury Story Edition Packs. There's a glass and a half in everyone. Fabio's easier. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, guys, we have a WhatsApp from Ethelwyn. Ethelwyn? Ethelwyn. Thank you. Ethelwyn or Ethel Lynn? Ethelwyn. Um, yes, I've actually, even last night, I battled with Ethel. Morning, morning, Espresso. Um. It's my feel good this show. Welcome back. Thank you so much for rejoining this really important conversation this morning. It is World Suicide Prevention Day, commemorated on the 10th of September, in fact, to promote worldwide commitment and to action to prevent suicides, which are committed by... 3,000 people daily. Sure. Let that sink in. Our conversation on suicide awareness and prevention resumes with our wonderful panel consisting of psychiatrist Dr. Apabio, actor and performer Bruce Feldman and spokesperson for the uh, brilliant South African Depression and Anxiety Group Senzakile Shongwe. And of course we're encouraging you guys to drop us a voice note and weigh in on the discussion. 063 408 is the number to use. Well, we ha actually have a voice note now. This one came through from Ethel Wynn. Let's take a listen to it. Morning, morning, Espresso. Um, yes, I've actually, even last night, I battled with that thought. Thought, let me just end it because we're struggling so much as young, young people these days. This generation of ours, there's so much pressure on us. Such a lot of things happening in the world around us and it actually made me so depressed last night as I was about to fall asleep and I thought people that are dead are actually better off, you know? I just want to make sure that everyone <laughs> knows that there is the South African depression and anxiety group that is there to assist. The number is on your screen right now. I would highly encourage you to please contact them. Senzi, what are some of the signs and symptoms that we as outsiders can look 
to be able to help those who are in that dark hole. And, you know, just listening to the voice note right now, the first one is hopelessness. Yeah. Feeling like there really isn't anything that I can do anymore so that my situation can get better. Mm -hmm. um, and when the list goes on, I mean, it's quite an extensive list, but you would find that sometimes you feel quite sad for long periods of time. If you have been feeling sad and like you're in a dark space for more than two weeks, it is time for you to go and see a psychologist or speak to a counsellor. And you find that your sleeping patterns also change and yeah. they get disturbed you either sleep way too much or you struggle to sleep and that sometimes is a big trigger because when you don't sleep enough you become tired you see so they build on to each other and when you get tired you get more depressed and you yeah. get more sad um, or you find that sometimes um, you sleep way too much that your days are not productive and mm. you are always feeling lethargic <coughs> um, and feeling like your life is stuck and you are unable to make decisions you are unable to focus so depression is this big um, dark hole that you feel like you cannot get yourself out of. And that is why people then start thinking of taking their lives because they feel this sense of hopelessness and that there really isn't anything I can do. I don't see the light because it's darkness, right? And you are always just looking to get that light and finding that light and finding that hope. But when you are now in a state of saying, I want to take my life, you, can't, you, you really don't see a way out. And I always say that there always is a way out. All you have to do is to reach out for help. All you have to do is to have a good support system in your life and actually use the people around you that love you and that care for you. Uh, and there is a community of people who really do care and understand the space. And just listening to you talk about that sense of dark, it's almost like walking in a dream. And the longer you stay in that, the more detached from reality you get. And I think that's when those darker thoughts suddenly start to gain a bit more relevance and momentum. You're like, hang on a minute, maybe that actually is an option. Yeah. Bruce, in your book, Trapped But No Barriers, you talk very much to the, uh, the notion of young people protecting their mental health. We know that men have a much higher suicide, four times higher suicide rate in this country. And I think you know, we've spoken about this notion of toxic masculinity and what it means yeah. to be a man and not show your weakness. If I look back, I wish someone had taught me tools to manage my mental health, like my physical health, like mm -hmm. my mental well-being in terms of intelligence and fostering that. Mm -hmm. I wish someone had spoken about those coping mechanisms. Why is it so important for young people to understand the fragility or how their mind works and how they can lose their way but need to know how to protect it? Why is it so important? It's very important because um, as a man, especially within South Africa. Society has built these walls or stigma that you as a man is supposed to be strong. You as a man, you carry the family. You as a man, you're not allowed to carry your emotions on your sleeves. Suck you, it up. Yeah, you should suck it up and be a man, you know? And at the end of the day, all of those things, they pile up and then they lead to depression. You start looking at your life and you feel worthless, which is a sign of uh, depression. And you look at the next person's life and for, for some reason you, th you compare yourself to other people and you, you start asking yourself, okay, so why are they so happy? Why am I not as productive or as happy as they are? And you, you just start being less productive. You start feeling worthless and it, 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 it all kind of boils down to depression, which then leads to suicidal thoughts. And um, like, like, like uh, as she has said just now, that you feel that suicide actually uh, ends the pain when well, it really does not. Yeah. It only shifts the pain, yeah. you know, it shifts it from you to the next, maybe to your parents or your friends or the people that you love loved with. So it's very important for us as, as a society as a whole to, to, to be mindful of our mental health, to take care of ourselves because if I am not productive, I cannot be productive to the next person. Yeah. If I don't have, I cannot give to the next person. So it's very important to, for myself to take care of myself first before I can take care of the next person. Yeah, yeah, that notion of put the, the oxygen on your own face yes. first so that you are there to help the people around you. We're going to continue this discussion. Please weigh in if you've got a personal perspective or would like to share your thoughts with us this morning. 063 Drop us a voice now to me. As you can hear, the conversation will continue, but keep on sending your voice notes through. You are not alone. Now, did you know that baking has been found to have therapeutic value, which can help ease anxiety and depression? Try it yourself with this next classic.
Clover's range of margarines and spreads. Classic spread. Mama Bake. Margie, how do you know what we like? I know someone who knows. Spread the Margie love. Made with love by Clover. So having green fingers is extending into the kitchen because we're using our baking skills to make garden art bread to celebrate spring day. It's appropriate garden, flowers, blooming and baking. Now simply put, it is the art of using bread dough as a blank canvas to arrange vegetables in a way that creates flower-like pictures. And Tando, our amazing chef, shows us how to put our artistic skills to the culinary test. Chef Tando. Hi. An honor to share a kitchen with you once again, madame. All the time. An honor. It really is going to be Thank great. You. So, we are inspired today because, you know, it's spring day. Yes. And, and also, we're talking about some very, very uh, important topics. Mm. And I think baking is a way to connect with people who you love because you're working together to construct something. Yes. To build something. Also, it's like it's a stress reliever. It helps you get out of like whatever state you could be in. You just like transport to a different world, a much calmer world. And let's get calm together. So, let's talk about what we're going to use. Yeah, I see yeah. the flour in the bowl already. Yes. Normal flour. Correct. We drop it in there. Of course, remember the recipe and method will be available on expressoshow.com, but let's take ourselves through. What are we putting in there next? Sugar. Uh huh. Some. Everybody needs some sugar. Please, all the time. You know it. Salt. And then we're just going to mix this through. So, dry ingredients go in first. Correct. Before and we get to the color. Yes. Mm. And then here, we've got our Clover Classic Spread. Clover Classic Spread. I've yeah. done some research in Clover Classic Spread. Well, mm -hmm. it's because I use it, but let me tell you, a Clover Classic is an ideal and versatile fat spread that can be used daily for spreading uh, and, of course, cooking and baking as well. And it contains seven vitamins and is made with a touch of clover cream for a smoother spreadability. You know spreadability, it's a word it to describe the way we spread ourselves around okay. all our talents. Where and did things you find that make us word? happy. It's from a dictionary. Which one? Which it's one? It's the Clover Classic dictionary that I've created. It's worked. I right? think I think they need to take you <laughs> to make more dictionaries. Yes, we will do that. Okay, so you put a couple <laughs> of that. Okay, those in there, and then our yeast. In water. this, I think it's important. So it's yeast and water. And water. You'll and you, also how do you sugar. activate the yeast? So sugar helps with activating the there yeast. There we go. It feeds the yeast. There we go. And then we're gonna add all this in here. I'm just gonna take this out. And what are we looking for in terms of when we mix this together? We're looking for a, a dough. A dough, yes. Right. So you want a bread dough, not too hard, not too soft. Perfect. Just a great medium sort of texture. And I'm assuming that we'd now, once incorporated, would need to proof it with yes. a couple of kitchen tiles over that. Just to make sure it's got a good, warm, dark environment so the yeast can do its thing. The yeast can do its thing, then it's going to double in size. And then once doubled in size, we'll have this right here. And can I tell you, this is kind of a metaphor, because if you think about it, you know, a lot of people sometimes think that, uh, you know, sort of being in, a, in your own space yeah, uh, and, and making sure that you understand what you're going through, right, is a completely bad thing. However, if you look at what happens with yeast, in a little spot on its ace, on the kitchen, it starts rising and growing and knowing that there are certain things within itself that is going to expand and, and be able to be shared with the world. Which it speaks to the potential in everybody. And this is why bread is so important. Yes. Because it just grows. Bread does the thing that needs to be done in terms of feel good. And mm -hmm. it's simple and it's it's wholesome. And I think that's the most important there thing. You so go. you're spreading that around. Yes. So this is kind of like a almost a focaccia type of vibe, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. correct. There we go. And then we're going to spread that around. Great. Drizzle some oil. Drizzling and is this where you're going to do that thing with it? I knew it the the fingertip yep. method is the best because it gives the bread character Correct. And I think it also puts a bit of you into the into entire the recipe as yes. well, which is, which is gorgeous And now I see a bunch of really great colorful ingredients too, and I love color I'm gonna have you decorate. Okay. I'm gonna decorate well the best way I can So what are we gonna do in terms of decoration? Make We've flowers got, We're gonna make flowers. Yes. Okay, flowers you show me and I, trees flowers and, and trees like okay talk to me about that There All we right. go and then we have a flower. And then it turns into a tree. Oh my word, hold on, that is, that is wow. And then you know, and then grass. I feel like you should continue. Wait, you're on a roll there. And, I can feel, and you also <laughs> look like you're enjoying yourself. Just continue. So we've got little slices of garlic that's in here, a bit of salt. We've got some red onion. We've got some uh, tomatoes. We've got some uh, yellow bell pepper. We've got, oh, this is great. And then of course, some spring onion too. There we go. And then another flower. 
Oh it, my God. it already looks great and it hasn't even baked yet. So how long do we go in the, in the oven of this one, Chef? So this one will go in for about 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes. And then once it's cooked through, then you just break it apart. Cook through test to do the normal thing? Test, test bread is great because you can't do the test or you can just look at it. I'm sorry. You You're going to look at, at it? Bread. Yes, you, you look at know. bread. You just know. <laughs> you just know. It says to you, I'm ready. Please eat me. <laughs> this is fantastic, Chef. It is always a pleasure, uh, you know, working with you in the kitchen. Colorful and amazing and a great group activity. If you want to get together with people who support you and love you, this is the way to go. If you want to get any of the recipe, ingredients, method, please check out expressoshow.com and give it a try because this is the way to add some color from your garden to the oven. Get it together and, of course, bring the fam together and rise together. Oh. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Okay, so, so I won't talk on, too long. On about a minute, I think <coughs> the segment's about five minutes. <coughs> one, two, one, two. Let me see what it's going to be. Yeah, do the sound check, Kenny. You can call two, five, they're going to. Two, five. Two, five. Two, five. One, two, three, four, five. Push it up. Push yeah. it up. Please cut again. One, two, three, four, five. A little bit more. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Okay. Go can you please cut? One, two, three, four, five. So so on the left. Left. Boys, ready? That is good. I more where we almost like your skin with Ingram's tissue oil and rich skincare range. Now with 72 hour rich moisture for radiant glowing skin. New look Ingram's, your skin, your brave. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast show. It's Expresso on S3 and our conversation on suicide, awareness and prevention. It resumes with our panel consisting of psychiatrist Dr. Akpabio, actor and performer Bruce Feltman and spokesperson for the South African Depression and Anxiety Group, Senzikile Shongwe. Now, we encourage you at home to join in on this discussion and share your thoughts. We have WhatsApps that's came through and this one's from Ursula. 
Good morning, Expresso. My name is Ursula. I share the sentiment of the pain that passes on. My son committed suicide a few years ago. Sometimes the pain is so intense that it feels like a cloak wrapped around my soul. My prayers are lifted for people with suicide thoughts. Thank you. Oh, Thank you, Ursula. Ursula. Our deepest condolences. We are sending you all of our love. I suppose this job, it highlights that, that life happens you know we we want to be bigger than these things we want to be stronger than these things but life especially over these last few years i think has been overwhelming for most of us mm -hmm. uh, doctor i'm gonna start with you because i can't let go of one particular fact the fact that as we mentioned earlier suicide rates are four times higher within men than women in south africa why is this uh yes Basically, it's because men are more likely to use lethal methods. So they might do something like a gunshot or hanging as opposed to women who might try something like an overdose. Okay. But you know, before you even get to that point, we talk about the societal, the social, the cultural and personal factors okay. that can impair a man's uh, access to mental health. Uh. So as you and Bruce had mentioned, the idea that a man has to be strong, a man has to suck it up, might affect the ability to access service and they might also then turn to poorer ways of coping like substances which as we've already mentioned also contributes to the risk of suicidality. Now Senzi Sadak, the South African Depression and Anxiety Group, it is a helpline and also a lifeline for a lot of people. How can people, I feel like this is an all-around question, how can they reach out? What happens when they phone that line? How can they talk to you and and are there steps that we can encourage people on how to deal with these negative thoughts that they have to see if they can self-regulate themselves? So SADAC has got over 200 um, counsellors that take uh, on calls from anyone and everyone um, that wants to um, get counselling, especially people that feel like they can't afford it but they are really in a, a, a dark state. And we also have got people that can actually afford the services but feel that they don't know how to navigate their way through the healthcare system. So we've got uh, mental health counsellors that actually are there to listen and to help. So you find that you're speaking to someone, firstly someone that you don't know, which makes you feel more comfortable yeah. to actually voice out and express yourself. Because we are actually living in a society where uh, mental health still has quite a lot of stigma That's in a, a lot of yeah. yes, in a lot of society. So we still find it hard to actually talk to our friends and to our families about the issues that we're going through. So actually speaking to a counsellor, a set counsellor helps you to be able to open up and actually get the right way of managing your mental health related challenges um, and to answer your question of how can people actually start taking care of their mental health it is very important to be aware of what you're feeling physically and mentally because when you are more aware of how you're feeling then you are able to create self-help techniques that are suitable for you yeah. that help you if you know that in the mornings I don't feel so great then you kind of find a way of managing that you can decide that I'm going to start jogging in the morning mm -hmm. it is important for you to exercise because that actually makes you happy okay um, and actually eating well because eating unhealthy yeah. food can also affect your mental health and making sure that again and I'm gonna repeat this you actually have got a good support structure and if you do not have family or friends actually making contact with SADC or a psychologist so that you actually have that support and also doing things that make you happy doing things that you're good at yeah. mm. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to do things that you're good at because they make you feel positive, yeah. yes they make you feel good about yourself and it takes away what you mentioned this sense of worthlessness so that is very important and people can call 0800 567 567 free from their cell phone to speak to a mental health counselor and, and whether that's in an emergency situation if you have a suicide situation yes. there that you are engaging with you can speak to a professional to hit the nail on the head yeah I've been working with SADAG for the last five weeks on a movement campaign just to get people moving 
giving. Don't focus on trying to solve the problem because we know that that's too big. That's why you feel this way. Focus on the first step. Mm -hmm. Focus on taking that first step, i.e. speaking to someone who is trained to do that, speaking to a psychologist who is trained to help you through that process. I can guarantee you know how, no matter how dark it feels right now, there is someone ready to help you. You just need to reach out. Thank you so much to all of you for joining us this morning. This has been wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. A fantastic chat and of course as you make sure that your mind is steady you have to also look after your body and that's why Kukle is standing by for a mood boosting fitness at the Redford House Blue Hills. Something outdoor and something very good for the body and the mind. A very good morning to everyone in studio. Good morning to you, Mzansi India Tamil and Amsanti. And if we get any right, new ready, new relevant, spring has finally sprung. And we are coming to you live from a very special place this morning, the Redford House Blue Hills. We are here in the outdoor gym. As you can see, the guys are busy demonstrating all the equipment behind us. We all know the importance of an outdoor gym. You get your dose of vitamin D and it's also good for your mental and physical health. Right now, we are joined by Head of College, Kathy George, and Sports Coordinator, Kirjig Haggard. And we'll be talking about all things health this morning. Good morning. Happy Spring Day. Thank hey, you. Hey, happy Spring Day. <laughs> Kathy, please tell us more about the wellness program. Right, at Redford House Blue Hills, we have moved into an era of well-being, a culture of well-being with our students, because it's more than just the physical well-being of students. We're looking at their social, emotional, and general well-being, because if you are happy and healthy, you are able to strive and achieve great things in life. Absolutely agree with that. Kudrick, Touching on that, why is it important for kids to be involved in activities and sports? You know, touching on a bit of what Cathy just said there, um, there are really aspects that are massive. Uh, benefits, socially, uh, the kids get to socially act, uh, interact with others, mm. teamwork, camaraderie, um, they learn to work, they learn to take instructions, uh, there's psychological aspects, emotional aspects, physical aspects. So not only is it good for their physical well-being, but mental state of well-being, emotional state of well-being. You know, we don't know what goes on with the kids at home, mm. what they do. So they come, do sport, and it's sort of most a protected environment where they can improve healthy, uh, mentally and physically and it builds a sort of confidence right self-confidence within oneself mm -hmm. especially that bond and trust Definitely. amongst your teammates as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. Kathy I have to ask has you know this been implemented in has it been implemented in the school's curriculum, the phys ed curriculum? Yes, most definitely. Um, during the phys, phys ed lessons, our students are able to come out and enjoy the gym facilities. Not only during phys ed, but in the morning, as we are this morning, they come out early morning, some in the afternoon before their sport training, so that they can work out. And part of the whole well-being program at Redford House Blue Hills is to talk about them being significantly involved in activities. If they're enjoying what they do, they actually succeed in life. Something exciting is happening, Kodrick. Some of the students will be traveling to the US of A, right? To be a part of the College so Soccer Showcase Tour. Tell us more about that. So in 2019, uh, we actually uh, we had CFA Midstream, a football club partner with us, where we created our own football club here at Blue Hills College, at Red House Blue Hills. We have, um, it's called CFA Blue Hills, and with their coaches, we've structured an environment where the students are able to play school football, but line it up with, with um, local football association football and play club football on the weekends. Mm. We've seen that the opportunity is massive for students to combine their academics with their sporting ability. Mm. and. 2019, we were blessed to have two boys from Redford House Blue Hills, Lusanda and Basia Mwiti. They are currently studying at Heston College in the States and they're going on the third year. Yeah. Uh, it's a massive opportunity. We're currently this year, we're taking 11 boys from Redford House Blue Hills on tour with us. And we're, we're quite positive that we're looking at large number of them getting a scholarship. It's an environment where they're able to showcase their talent mm. but also use the academics and combine the two to create a healthy environment and go forward and you know 
get a decent study in at a great institution. Plenty of opportunities there. Um, and the soccer is a, a growing massively in the States. Mm. So it's, it's a great attraction for the boys. Um, gives them a, a, a quite a variety uh, to go out and do. Can I just turn back the hands of time so that I could be a part <laughs> of the college? Hey, it sounds yes. incredible for the kids and I'm pretty sure the parents are here cheering for them. Thank you so much, Kathy yes, and Kodrick, for joining us this morning and telling us more about the importance of physical and mental health, especially focusing on your academics. Kids, are you listening? Do not go anywhere because we will be back out here, okay? We're about to explore the junior free space. That is something very very interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing. Back to you guys in studio. Take lashes higher. New Revlon Eyes Wide Open Mascara. The curved brush volumizes and lifts lashes vertically for a wide-eyed lash look. Hemp seed oil conditions for healthy looking lashes. Go higher. New Revlon Eyes Wide Open Mascara. Couldn't have said. Okay. Oh. Testing one, two, one, two. Colonial Clock Company established in 1870, yeah. providing clocks that don't work for over two centuries. Competitive game. I know. Yeah. You like my dad joke? Yeah. I think it's the best one so far. <laughs> which which dad joke? your feel-good breakfast shows just before seven o'clock and it's time for us to get into those morning headlines here's Carl Wasty. Thanks Zoe Brown let's take a peek at your national headlines first now people have been alerted and warned and wildlife authorities in KZN are making every effort to locate a pride of lions which escaped from the Umfulawazi Wilderness Private Game Reserve in Tluluwe Umfulawazi Park yesterday a fully grown male was spotted on the road near Ulundi by a motorist late yesterday afternoon last night the pride was reported to be in a valley inaccessible to vehicles rangers have come across the carcasses of two calves uh, there have been no reports of attacks on residents. Meanwhile, the Health Professions Council of South Africa says it's concerned about the escalating number of fake doctors around the country. Evidence before the Kimberley Magistrates Court has revealed that a 38-year-old bogus doctor accused of sexually assaulting a 17-year-old girl is not registered with the Health Council. Now, the bogus doctor allegedly assaulted the teenage girl in his surgery. He has another sexual assault case against him dating back to April. The Health Council's Christopher Tatsawane uh, said the increasing number of unregistered that health practitioners was of great concern. Now on to international news. Queen Elizabeth will meet the outgoing UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson for the last time at Balmoral Castle in Scotland on Tuesday. A spokesperson for the Buckingham Palace says she will shortly afterwards meet the new Prime Minister who has uh, to be appointed by the Queen in accordance with British customs. It will be the first time in her 70 years as monarch that she will not appoint the new PM at Buckingham Palace. The announcement of who will succeed Johnson as British Prime Minister will be made on Monday. 
Now the lawyers of veteran Kenyan politician Raila Odinga, who is challenging the presidential election results, have alleged that there was systematic rigging in favor of the winning candidate William Ruto, citing inconsistencies in the final tally. Odinga's lawyers made their submissions during yesterday's Supreme Court hearing of their request to nullify Ruto's victory, citing gross mismanagement of the election. They informed the court that the transmission system for the results forms was compromised through unauthorized access by known and unknown persons. And now a very interesting story that's going to make you eat your veggies. Now, Dwayne Hansen of Nebraska in the U.S. of A. has set a most unique world record on his 60th birthday. He floated 61 kilometers down the Missouri River in his giant homegrown pumpkin. The pumpkin named S.S. Berta weighed a whopping 384 kilograms and was carved out to float. And who could forget to make a place to hold your drink? A must for any good time floating down a river. Hansen says he came up with this idea when visiting Ohio and seeing another person attempt to better the 41-kilometer record, which was set in 2018. So after asking members of the local mayor's office to witness his attempt, he set sail. The city of Bellevue later wrote on Facebook that it was only after a while that they realized Hansen would actually be riding in a pumpkin on his trip. Friends traveled alongside him for the entire journey, ensuring there were no mishaps along the way. Hansen ended up smashing the record, traveling 61 kilometers in 12 hours to Nebraska City, setting a new Guinness World Record. Well done to him. That's a wrap of the news. Over to my pumpkin. Here's Graham. And at least he had putt course or river course along the way. We love that. Let's start with rugby this morning. Andre Pollard and Lucanio Arm, unfortunately, they'll be returning to their clubs for further medical assessments. That was after being ruled out of Saturday's clash against Australia in Sydney. So both players suffered those knee injuries against the Wallabies in Adelaide last weekend. That prompted the decision to send them back to the Leicester Tigers and Sharks, respectively, for their further medical advice. Then Alton Yankees and Peter Steph Toy, they will remain in camp. Thankfully, they are expected to recover sufficiently from their injuries for the last two matches. Then Jacques Nineveh said no replacements would be called up at this point. In exciting times for cricket South Africa, their new T20 tournament finally has a name, and that's in the form of the SA20. And it's set to start in mid-January next year. The league's draft will take place on the 19th of September to fill out the six teams with 17 players, so 10 of which will be local and then seven international. From a match day perspective, the teams will follow the international standard of seven local and four foreign players format. And the SA20 has already attracted some big names, the likes of Liam Livingston, Joss Butler, Jason Holder, Rashid Khan and Moeen Ali to add to the list of world-class contracted Proteus players as well. Then on to football. Yes, he's probably going to become the most expensive player on the planet. Erling Haaland continued his blistering start to his Manchester City tenure by scoring a hat-trick again inside 38 minutes as the Premier League champions absolutely smashed newly promoted Nottingham Forest 6-0. So Haaland has scored nine goals in five league games since joining City from Borussia Dortmund and has back-to-back hat-tricks after netting three in Saturday's win over Crystal Palace as well. Then goals from Gabriel Jesus and Gabriel Gabriel Martinelli earned Arsenal a 2-1 win over Aston Villa. That is, the Gunners kept up their 100% start to the Premier League season. Then Liverpool, they needed a 98th-minute winner from Fabio Cavallo to uh, beat Newcastle 2-1, while Spurs and West Ham played out to a one-all draw. Then on to tennis, he's back at it. Former champion Andy Murray looks almost back to his best, reaching the U.S. Open third round for the first time in six years with a four-sets win over American wildcard entry Emilio Nava. So Murray, who won the U.S. Open back in 2012, came out on top 5-7-6-3-6-1-6-love. Then Rafa Nadal and Diego Schwartzman, as well as Denis Shapovalov, they're also through to the next round. Then in the women's side of the draw crowd, favorite Coco Goff overcome Elena Gabriela Russo, 6-2, 7-6 to progress. Madison Keys and Oncia Beer also looking strong there through, while the third seed Maria Sakari surprisingly was dumped out of the competition. But that's where we leave our sport for now. We'll hopefully touch on those headlines again at 8 o'clock right now. Let's see how the roads are looking, bring you your first traffic update.
Thank you, Graham. Well, let's start off with traffic in Vatercloof Ridge in Pretoria. Now, there's an accident on the N1 southbound at the Regal Avenue on ramp. Now, that left lane of the road is closed. Please approach with caution. And in Matruisfontein in Cape Town on that ramp, there's ramp closures due to roadworks on the N2 outgoing at Borchett's Quarry. Make sure to add some extra travel time to your journey this morning. And staying in Cape Town in Delft, there's a vehicle that's broken down on the R300 southbound after Hindle Road. Road. The emergency lane is blocked. Please approach with caution. Well, that's where I leave your traffic for now. Let's take another look at your weather. And we start with some news. Super Typhoon Hinam Nam No, termed as the strongest global storm of 2022, is gaining strength and heading towards East China Sea, also threatening Japan's southern islands. Now whirling over the West Pacific Ocean and packing winds of 257 kilometers an hour and gusts as strong as 314 kilometers per hour, it poses a risk to the Philippines, Japan and China. Early this morning, South African time, the Category 5 typhoon was centered around 200 kilometers east of Japan's Okinawa Island and was expected to proceed west southly west towards Ryu Kayu Islands. Now, in view of this, Japan Airlines has cancelled all flights in the Okinawa Awa region. Earlier rainfall across the Ryu Kayu Islands was measured at 200 to 300 millimeters, signaling substantial flooding. The typhoon is, however, expected to lose some strength over the coming days. While well, moving on from that typhoon news, we now bring it back home where we take a look at those sunrise views. Well, for your 7 a.m. update, we have this photo sent in by Cheryl Ann, who snapped this early morning photo of the radiant shades of pink glistening across the sky out, and that was taken in Peter Maritzburg. Evandre from Atlantis shared this gorgeous, gorgeous glimpse of the vibrant indigo hues peeking through the palm trees. What an incredible color. And Debbie shared this tropical field sunrise in Marina Beach in KwaZulu-Natal. Just look at all those pinks really showing off this morning. And finally, Nancy from Pennington, KZN, shared her morning, took her morning stroll and shared a beautiful photo of the beach as she loves to share her views with her favorite show. And this morning, completely showing off the waves crashing on the rocks with beautiful colors lighting up the sky. Thank you for that photo, Nancy. Well, make sure to send through those WhatsApp. In fact, you can WhatsApp those sunrise views to us on our number which is 063-408-8863. Let's quickly get into your temperatures. If you're in Paula Kwane, your low is 5, your high 22. Mbumbela, 7 with a high of 23. Sunny in Pretoria, 9 is your low, 22 your high. Johannesburg, 9 reaching a high of 21. Mahiking 824, Clarksdorp 825, Kimberley 12 with a high of 24, Bloemfontein 523, Sunny in Richards Bay 14 with a high of 22, Peter Maritzburg 1024, Durban 14 with a high of 20, partly cloudy conditions in Tata 12's your low, 27 your high, East London 1823, Craddock 11 reaching a high of 26, Kabecha 15 with a high of 24, George 11 reaching a high of 29, Cape Town 12, 21, Worcester 7 with a high of 28, Sutherland 8, 23 with windy conditions and Uppington your low is 17, your high 31 degrees Celsius. Well that's where I leave your weather for now, a final update coming your way shortly after 8. Uh, so in just a moment, we can introduce you to Redford House Blue Hills College, an exceptional organization doing amazing things with amazing kids. Then we brought in the Thrustmaster. Oh my goodness, the Thrustmaster is what it's called. <laughs> and I can tell you straight up, when it comes to gaming entertainment, Grant Hines will take the wheel in the next couple of minutes. Stick around. K53! I see what you did. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. <coughs> Good 
the boom, it doesn't move. Mm -hmm. What was it? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Thank you, okay. Hmm? Um, Let's see how long. I just need to know the names. My name is Erin. My name is Erin. Erin Hughes. And Tracy Lee Curtin. They're going to do um, a show and tell, am I right? You know, they're going to show. Yes. Yeah. We're going to show and tell. <laughs> Like the kids do. Very much like the kids. I actually like that. <laughs> So there's not much of a difference between this and like a Montessori. Um, no, I'm huge difference. Point, yeah. Is there? Yeah. Huge yeah. difference. Just pointing. So, so I'm, going I'm going to point. She's going to be more hands-on because okay. mine will be more of a description. Yeah, I can pick it up. At this one, you can more pan. She will touch and fiddle on that. I'll be touching on the floor. Yeah. Yep. Call on the table. It's my feel good breakfast show. Tech Talk Thursday, and I can tell you the wheel will be taken by one incredible individual. Grant Hines is standing by with that. And there's been a racing craze lately, as you can feel, with Formula One and more individuals are coming through and supporting it. And they want to race at home. They want to feel the Verstappen. They want to feel the wheel in their hands. And our tech and gaming expert, Grant Hines, as mentioned, is here to show us what to look for when buying a steering wheel for your console or PC. Grant, as you focus on the road yes. and focus on me and focus on the road and me, We'll pretend I'm on a road trip. How's okay, about that? Yes, road yeah. trip. So yeah. let's, let's have a chat about a, a gaming steering wheel. Now, this has always been, if you're a gamer, you know, it it's gives you that feel of a game. It's not, a, it's not a, a remote in your hand thinking, hey, let me just do the controller and move my thumb around. You actually can feel it. Exactly. So this kind of steering wheel is something that you want to look at getting if you're trying to upgrade your racing experience. I recommend this for people that play racing games specifically. Yeah. That's their thing. And you've got a place in your house that you can keep it. So the first thing that I would look for when buying a steering wheel is that not all of these steering wheels are compatible with the game of your choice. Yes. So people like playing Forza. They like playing Formula One 2021. Uh, or one of those games and make sure that it works on the console that you have yeah. uh, before you purchase it. And this is this goes to parents who are buying this <laughs> for their for their kids. Uh, when mm. you do that, uh, make sure that it works with the console at home because I've had that experience. My mom would come home with something. I bought this thing for you. Yeah. It doesn't work with the stuff we have. So make sure that you do that. The second thing is make sure that it's got force feedback in it. Um, as you can see now, I'm going to let go of the string wheel now. As you can see, it's, it's, it's got a motor in it. Oh, I'm terrible. I'm, uh, um, it's, oh no, what am I doing? Um, I got, it's got a motor in it which gives me the feedback of yes. what's happening. So counter steering, the, the g-force of the car as it moves around the track. And this Thrustmaster is actually particularly great at it because you can have different settings. So some people for accessibility, for yes. instance, would really struggle, maybe if you're also young kids, would really struggle with something that's a little bit more uh, like force feedbacky. So you can switch it off or slow it down, which is very cool. Um, yeah, and then also this one comes with pedals, which I have underneath me, and I drive an automatic, so it's yep. like I've somehow forgotten that the brake is next to the accelerator. I'm hitting the clutch, and the clutch, <laughs> clutch doesn't break the car. K53. I got my, I got my 10 and 2. I got my 10 I, and 2. I actually wanted to ask you about that because you know when you get a steering wheel, there are many people who believe that there's a compatibility with you <laughs> doing this at home on a game, and then going and going to do it when you go to your driving lesson. So what's what's the compatibility like in terms of the connection and and the technology keeping up with the real time driving? It is. It's really. It really feels like the real thing. I mean, I must say, I mean, it's a little bit smaller than a steering wheel, yeah. like a like a professional, well, maybe a racing steering wheel is the small, because, yes. you know, but the one that you have in your car is a little bit smaller. But the concepts that we're learning here, I firmly believe that Gran Turismo, like when I started yes. doing, like that trained me for being able to do my drivers. I was doing my A internationals in the game when I was 13, and when I got to, uh, when I got to do my drivers, I understood cars a little bit better and how they All functioned. Right. And like, stuff like, how do you take a corner, you know, that kind of thing, uh, which is very cool and then I'm so happy you said Gran Turismo not GTA because I think it's a lot you know what I'm saying no, a lot, no, pe yeah, yeah, a lot of people have le learned their driving from GTA 
But just in terms of, of, so what game are you playing? I think that's just a very good conversation around games that are compatible with steering wheels. Yeah, so we're playing Forza. Um, this one does have the capacity to include like a gear shift or, right, or cool. something. But what, I, what I've done here is you can see that there are paddles on the steering yes. wheel and I can shift down. I have it on automatic uh, because I'm talking to you. Thank you. So no one mock me at home <laughs> know, about fine. my driving ability. No one's judging you, dude, don't worry. Um, so it's so th that way if you want to do that and also it's got the clutch so you can rock your clutch while you drive and change your gears and really get used to how a car functions and then also the great thing about having a steering wheel like this and, yeah. a, and a game of like Forza 7 is that you can drive the world's best cars and they've worked with the developers of these games to give you like a, a, a feeling of, of that car which is very similar to how it is in real life and a lot of people wow. won't have the opportunity to drive like million rand cars racing cars but now you can and what it's like to go around like for stopping around a yes a, like a formula one car around a track okay don't do that because that's gonna whoa okay don't see this is the <laughs> and then in terms of the, mounting this thing obviously not everybody's got a nice table like this so uh, and I, I know people buy entire contraptions big chairs yes. etc so for this specifically for the feedback for the motor you're gonna need a, something sturdy to put it on right yeah so you can clamp it to a desk like we've got here but both of these devices have screws at the bottom okay. screws that like screw holes yes. so you can mount them to something that you've built some people build their own little driving wow. rigs and seats or uh, if you can buy a bucket seat and we rig if you want to take it really extreme like that's the way maybe that's the ultimate Christmas for somebody in your in your life and this is what you what you want for them maybe that's what you want to get but that's how it goes steering wheels and gaming the compatibility is very important so don't just go and buy something make sure you know exactly uh, what you're getting and of course what the compatibility is with the game you're playing and of course the uh, console that you have at home thanks a lot to Grant Hines for always taking the wheel on gaming entertainment and your feel good record show this is Expresso. Driving's hard. Should we be uh, worried about his driving just based on how... Just don't drive with him. It's fine. It's safe to that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We love it. Well, Kutleo is standing by with some incredible young people. We're about to get into the junior free space now at the amazing Redford House Blue Hills. Okay. And we are back coming to you live from Redford House Blue Hills this morning. It's spring, ladies. Happy spring day. It's Happy a special spring. day. <laughs> we are now in an area called the Free Space, which is centered around an educational philosophy of the Regi Regio Regio Emilia. Emilia approach and they are here to tell us more about that actually um firstly we've got redford's early learning school coordinator aaron hughes as well as the junior primary coordinator tracy Curtin, to tell us more about this approach good morning ladies good morning, good morning. <laughs> thank, um, you, for thank yes. you for having me tracy You're i'm going to start off with you okay. please tell us more about this area the free space what it's about First of all, free space is, is a magical space. And that is where we develop on our children's critical thinking skills. So we designed this area, first of all, not only to look beautiful, but for when the children come here, for them to have the opportunity to explore vocab development, mm -hmm. tangrams, brainy blocks, mm -hmm. Rubik's cubes. I know we spoke about this earlier. Ooh. Our junior <laughs> prep children had a big interest in Rubik's Cube, so we decided we'd actually start a club for them. And with the Reggio Emilia approach, what we do, it is very child-centered, the learning. So we follow their interests, and that's how they learn. Because when you're interested in something, mm. that's where the learning takes place. Um, so when the kids come to this room, there's no dedicated time, set time. When the inspiration hits, Hmm. That's when any of my junior prep teachers can come and use this space. And you start to explore. We explore everything. Um, my class, for example, I do have a grade three class. They are absolutely obsessed with Formula One. <laughs> so Who is it? Formula One. <laughs> We're a bit upset about the news about Formula One, but we're also very excited about it. And the children wanted to know where are the different places the races are taking place. Mm -hmm. Now, I could have gone onto Google and projected it up on the board and told them where, where they're taking place. Mm -hmm. but. Instead, we actually went to go get their iPads. The school's got iPads for everyone in this room. And they got into teams and they actually researched and found the various venues, the schedule. Mm. From there, it went to how we could travel to those countries, yes. how long the distance is. So it actually, that investigation and knowledge linked into learning more things, mathematics, English, all of it. So, it's an amazing room for learning. It's exploring all different types of possibilities, Correct. right? Endless possibilities. Correct. I'm 
interested in the learning approach, Erin. Please tell us more about it and what are the benefits of it? So what Regio essentially is, is like Tracy said, it is a child-centered approach. So what actually this means is that the children provoke the idea and the interest as to where we're moving. So I want to give you, and it also comes from a different perspective, mm. because no two children are the same. No two adults are the same, no two humans are the same. And it's all about where we see things and how we see things. So I'm going to ask you, what do you see? Mm. I see an M on the white paper. Okay. I see a W. Okay. Now what do you see? A three. I see an E. And now? A W. I see an M. Can you see where I'm going with this? 100%. So both of us are 100% correct. Mm -hmm. However, it's all from where we're standing and from where we're seeing things. And that's exactly how children learn. Children have different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Children learn differently. And it's about how we facilitate and how we guide the learning process that best suits each child. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use our example here okay. in terms of, so these are just our little loose bits. Okay. We love to construct, we teach through construction, and it also, in, it also provokes and it helps with the imagination and the creativity within the children. So if I was to have this in the class, you've got the round table where the children can move freely around. Mm. If we're in a team, I may be on this side, you may be on that side. Mm -hmm. Does it mean that we're seeing this river in the same way? No. no. So if I wanted to build something, some children may or may not want to go and put the little pebbles on. Some may end up building a bridge to go mm. across the river. Everybody's right, it's just about using their creative thinking and using their imagination to build, which then in turn results in the critical thinking. Mm. It then also, it, it promotes communication between the teacher and the student, as well as the students and their peers. It, it, promotes negotiating, especially mm. when you're working in a team. And that's what, that's how the Regio approach, uh, it just, it's so amazing. It's <laughs> critical <laughs> skills, critical thinking, it's collaborative learning Absolutely. as well. And that's something that's truly important, especially when it comes to the development of our young ones. This looks like a very exciting space. It looks liberating as well. Thank you so much for joining us this morning and telling us more about the junior free space here. We are still coming to you live from Redford House Blue Hills out here in Johannesburg. Do not go anywhere because shortly we will be meeting up with their robotics team. You do not want to miss out on that. I can make my day. Away from the, the steering wheel. No, he wants me away from the steering wheel. Like, Welcome back to Feel Good Breakfast Show. This is Expresso on S3, and we're in part two of a gaming review. Now, first, we did the Thrustmaster steering wheel along with Forza, mm -hmm. but now we've got a new game because Kirby is out on a different platform altogether. We also brought Zoe in, Grant, if you don't mind, because Zoe saw the steering wheel, 
and she said she needed to try the Thrustmaster. Yes, but you love Kirby. I love Kirby. I had a Kirby, yeah. and then I, I no longer have a Kirby, so now I want to play So you game. did the driving one. This wasn't a boys versus girls thing. This was you did the driving one because yes. you wanted to do the game review with me, yes. and then so he was like, I love Kirby. So I we're love gonna Kirby. Be doing. Perfect. So we are playing a Kirby's Dream Buffet. And it is a very interesting game. Uh, I really like it. It's on the Nintendo yeah. Switch, and it's a race of sorts. So <laughs> on the right, race. we have uh, a Zoe running around with the blue blue Kirby. <laughs> I am uh, on the left as a pink Kirby. And then what we are... Oh, no! Okay, I fell off the Great, edge of the You know what I love about these Wait, games? I is that the their sound effects are better than the game. <laughs> sound the developers spent millions on sound effects, but they are winning here. So the objective yep. of the game is to... Eat all the strawberries. Eat all the strawberries, make our way to the end of the map. It's very simple. We are walking over waffles. These, <laughs> I would love a green waffle. Oh, no. And then there are all these uh, food... Oh, those pancakes are getting in the way. And you can pick up stuff along the way as, like, superpowers that will help you get... Uh, a little bit further on in the game so that you can beat your component, uh, your opponents. Yeah. So think of it like as a little Hatch bit of up. Mario Kart oh, where you can like yes. put stuff together. We, we, I've just picked up some donuts and now I'm a wheel. Uh-oh. Okay, oh, I think oh, it's trying to push me a wheel. Strawberry is not coming to me. So you can play online, but yeah, the yeah. best part of this game 100% is what we're doing right now, playing with each other. And it's such a great <laughs> family game. You can play like uh, against, against your siblings, against your mom, against your dad. Um, uh, oh no, here I come with and the really straight the it It's is such a roll. simple concept. It is literally getting from the beginning of the map all the way through to, there we go, to the end of the map. I've, I've unleashed a power. Oh. There we go. So, so in terms of like, like a gift what for anybody Kirby's who's got this console as well, uh, it's not really a target market because I mean it's free play, so the, the entire fam gets the vibe. And also, but it's, what, what are parties? You know, bring friends over and do the, the a Kirby challenge. I know Zoe will say yes. Look, it, it, yeah, it, look, it's great for for party play because you can you can uh, have up to four people locally if you've got enough controllers. Oh, nice. Which is real fun. And like Mario Kart, Mario Kart's the, one of the ultimate yeah. like uh, uh, <gasps> I, I would consider party games ever made. So I've, I've got to the end of the race, and I don't know where you are. I still, oh, there we go, delicious. <laughs> Delicious! Who won? I definitely won. Well done. 100% definitely I think won. I ate the most strawberries, though. We'll see. Okay, here are the results. I, I, I did not won. eat the most strawberries. The green... You beat me! I did! <laughs> Wait. You beat me! I did! I was... Well I was done. I told That's you. you no, no, I didn't. I didn't. I, I beat you. I had 38 strawberries. You okay. had 17 strawberries. Sorry. And uh, the computer beat us by 67 strawberries. But, but the computer's wrong, Grant. Computer's <laughs> cheating. <laughs> computer's got hacks on. <laughs> but this looks like a fun, fun game, available now, of course, and then is this the only platform you can find your Kirby it's game? only available on Nintendo Switch, so uh, obviously with Nintendo Switch you get the two controllers on yes. the sides, you can pop them off and they become two separate controllers, great. so it's great for the family, and if somebody else in your family or your friends at school also have a controller, they can bring their controller, and then you can have four yes. people playing at the same time, and it's such a great way to kill an afternoon, it's such a nice family friendly thing, you can have like little uh, consolation prizes for who wins, like uh, who gets to drive. Uh, the next race, you know. And also from a body image point, I mean, the heavier the scale, the better. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's, you know, flipping the scales and the way you perceive yourself. You are valued and you are welcome, as you are, Grant. You dad jokes are extreme! Uh, thank you very much. It's inspirational today. That's how we're going. But I appreciate you coming through. We've done two amazing games. Forza with the Thrustmaster and now Kirby. What's next? Well, that's why you watch your Feel Good Breakfast Show. This is Expresso. What's next? How about we design something ourselves in a male-dominated space? So cool to hear about girls rocking in robotics. And we're about to meet some amazing youngsters doing amazing things. At Redford House, Blue Hills College, these girls are going to blow your mind. Welcome back. We are coming to you live from Redford House, Blue Hills this morning out here in Johannesburg. I'm about to, about to meet rather a very special group of young ladies alongside their coach. I'm talking about the robotics team. They walked away with the first prize, right? Yes. In Milan, Italy. Yes. yes. In a robotics competition. That is impressive, and we're about to find out more about that. We are joined by Re Re Redford's robotics teacher, David van Leeuwen, Leeuwen, as well as the robotics prize winners, the young ladies over here, Bordlen Washeng, Alicia Naidu, and Shalom Halata, and they're about to tell us more about their experience in the robotics team. Good morning. Morning. 
This is really exciting. I cannot wait to see what you guys have worked up here. But please tell us more about the competition that you won and what it aims to do. Oh, so the, the competition was, it was called the Inspired Build Competition. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a worldwide competition spanning over 22 countries. Wow. Um, and yeah, Milan was the host school. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a competition where it involves and invites all the inspired schools across the world. Um, it's just to showcase showcase the kids' talents and abilities um, in terms of coding. Um, and I think it's amazing, uh, it's an amazing competition and how it's growing and evolving every year. And I mean, for the girls to have put up a winning bot um, worldwide is absolutely amazing. And uh, the competition was uh, um, evolved around um, movement and mm -hmm. designing a robot that mimics the movement of an animal. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the whole idea and the criteria and they did an amazing job. And what's special about it is that you've got an all girls team here that achieved this in this huge thing internationally. Tell us more about what that means for the school and also just for them in general. Oh, I think it's absolutely fantastic that a girls team won. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I think the, the tech space is sort of known as a man's world, you know? Yes. And I think that's, that's changing. Um, and what the girls have done is absolutely fantastic. Um, I mean, you, you see today there are more uh, girls that game, uh, that get into web designing. Mm -hmm. And it's so fantastic to see a girls team actually win this. And for the, for the younger girls um, at school to see this and to look up to them and see, you know, and see what is possible in terms of coding and technology and um, I think it just bodes well for the future in terms of uh, girls in, in the tech space. One thing I will say is when I grow up I want to be exactly like them. Bontle, please tell us about your experience in Milan. What stood out for you when it comes to the design of this machine? Uh, what stood out for us was the fact that we did have to meet all four criteria, mm -hmm. and I think what made our bot unique was the fact that it was the first um, chicken ever entered into this competition, <laughs> and um, it was the like most creative out of all our other ideas because we did plan on building a butterfly mm -hmm. and a dragon, but at the end of the day, we decided that the chicken would be the most creative. Amazing. Alicia, please tell us more about the criteria that you guys had to meet in the competition. So for this competition, we had to build a robot that mimicked the movement of an animal. We had to be very creative with our idea as there were a lot of entries and they were more basic things, not like Charlie. Mm -hmm. And we had to find a way to make him work with the code and make it simple for the code. Amazing. Shalom. Is there anything happening exciting when it comes to the robotics team for the remainder of the year? Sadly, we do not have any further competitions for the year, oh. but as technology is evolving, it is getting harder and harder for students to complete their day-to-day -day work. So we feel as if we feel as if we are trying to we are trying to cooperate technology into a student's day-to-day -day life to help them for their future careers and to cope with school. And it's absolutely important. Technology is forever changing and evolving and adapting. Thank you guys so much for joining us this morning. But before we leave, we have to see what you guys did here with this little chicken. Okay, can you please demonstrate to us how it works? Okay. Did you guys name the chicken, by the way? Yes. What's the chicken's name? Charlie. Charlie the chicken, everybody. Who will be demonstrating it for us? Um, I will be demonstrating. All right, cool. Bonte is about to demonstrate how the chicken works and show us how they've won number one spot in Italy. That's Woo! So David, it was about movement, mobility, yes, yeah. and design. No, 100%. So about movement, designing the chicken, and mm. the way the girls incorporated the code, um, you know, for the chicken. So the chicken pecks the food. Um, they added a color sensor. Wow. So when they show the chicken the color yellow, mm. then the color sensor reacts, and it'll move forward, and it'll pick the little, mm. you know, the little um, food for, for Charlie the chicken. Um, uh, so yeah, and they made it look like a chicken, which is awesome. I think that um, they played well as well. So no, they did an amazing job. Very exciting. Absolutely amazing, Alicia, Bontle, and Shalom. Thank you so, so much for joining us this morning. And Charlie the Chicken, we are still coming to you live from Redford House Blue Hills this morning. It's spring day, and this is exactly how we are kicking off this season. Do not go anywhere, because we've got one more surprise for you guys. I can make my day. New Revlon Color Stay Matte Light Crayon. Play it up. Bold matte color goes on as easy as a crayon. Feels barely there. Super soft, 12 rocket poppin' shades. New Revlon Color Stay Matte Light Crayon. Wanna play?
Oké, okay, Jan, geef me mijn microfoon. Hallo, hallo, Graham. Jij lijkt mooi voor ogen. Charlie, doe je ook maar pom. Look at the smile on my face. Why? Because our favorite Prime Master, Jan Bry, the one and only, is calling on all South Africans to unite around a fire, share our heritage, and wave our flag this coming Heritage Day. Also known as National Bry Day. It's a thing, and we're here for it. In the days leading up to the 24th of September, Jan has planned a little trip around South Africa. In the span of seven days, he'll visit seven cities and host seven epic Prize. Jan, you look ready. I don't think I've ever seen you look this ready. Graham, it's the 1st of September, so, and it's morning, so Bry Month has been going for a few hours. We've got just <laughs> over three weeks to go until National Bry Day, and we're kicking off this national roadshow of Bry activities this morning with you. We're going to do a Chakalaka burger Cannot later, wait. truly South African style. So the whole point of what we're going to do for the next few weeks, and that's the activity start now, it's basically one massive PR and public awareness exercise just to get 50 or 60 million South Africans ready and, and to unite around fires uh, on 24 September. Because that's what we do. That's, that's what, what we, we do. do, my friend. Take me back to the beginning, 2005, as I understand it, when this yes. little idea started to germinate, take seed. What did you want to achieve with this? Why did you create this platform? Nation building and social cohesion. So South Africa is a great country. We've got a lot of uh, awesome things going for us. Call them building blocks or yeah. bricks. Uh, but we don't have enough nation building and social cohesion. And uh, I see National Bride and the activity of uniting around fires as the cement that binds all of these different building blocks together. So government in their wisdom, and they do do some good things, they said let's do 24 September, it's a public holiday for everybody to simply celebrate our rich and diverse culture and heritage. Now we do have a pretty rich and diverse culture and heritage in this country, but there's one thing that we all have in common, irrespective of the language you speak, what sports team you support, or what brand of jeans you wear, <laughs> or even how fit you are. You know, like Graham, you're super fit. I'm starting you to work on that, my man. summer body now. So whether you're fit or unfit, everybody has one thing in common, and that is that we all like to bry. As uh, the late uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu say, said, uh, the patron of National Bride Day, he said, show me one South African that's never been to a bry. And, uh, of course, all South Africans have been to Bryce. It's the one thing we have in common. So let's celebrate uh, that on the 24th of September. Yeah, and I think That's we need idea. it now, man. The world is so polarized. Everything has just become so charged. It just feels like the world has been a little bit crazy. So these moments to put the brakes on and just connect on a human level, I'm there for that completely. Seven days, seven cities. What's the deal, man? Where are you going and what are you going to be doing? Well, we're basically going to bry and we're going <laughs> to connect bry, with bry, bry. influential big media houses like this one as much as possible because it's the easiest way to spread important messages 100%. to the nation. So we're going to bry. So it's Cape Town now. Once we're done here, we drive straight to the airport, flying 
So after Corona, the, the flying landscape has changed. Well, the <laughs> air still looks the same, <laughs> yeah. but now if you want to go, Airlink is actually the one that suddenly flies everywhere. everywhere. They unbundle <laughs> from that other one that is really useless. Um, so it's awesome. So you can go anywhere. So we're going Cape Town, Bloemfontein. Nice. Uh, then Bloemfontein, Johannesburg. Then nice. Pretoria. There you can go with your car. Uh, so And then in Pretoria, we're actually going to launch a heritage Mitsubishi, sorry, I don't know if I should say that. Um, <laughs> they're launching a heritage Bucky for Heritage Month. <laughs> so we're going to hand one out. And uh, then from Pretoria, we're flying to uh, Mombela. Nice. And then from Mombela to Durban. From Durban to Kubeja. Uh -huh. Yeah. Nice. I trained that in the car coming well done. here this yeah, morning. Carl Thanks. Give you some, Nailed some it great in a single well. take. Well yeah. done. And then from there, back to Cape Town. And then we're going to finish off actually with Carl Waste, your fellow producer, because he's in the afternoons on, on, on the KFM, radio, yeah. on KFM. And that will be our final, Brian, seven days from now. Oh, it's going to be the best week ever, my friend. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to say thank you. Thank you for doing this. On behalf, 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 of, um, on behalf of all of us who care about the country. You're starting to speak the, Exactly, it's yeah, starting to, to slip <laughs> into my, my blood now. Uh, we owe you a lot for doing this, my friend. I know this is a labor of love, but you've been able to galvanize an entire nation, which is mm -hmm. something so awesome. You should be so proud of what you've achieved, my friend. Please now go make me a chakalaka burger. Yes. Is that all right? Is it first we, like an ad break or something? <laughs> Almost. Yeah. Do you know what so I'm we're going to walk to the kitchen part <laughs> of the studio. We're going to hold hands. And it's it's going to so be romantic. awesome. I'm going to hand you tuned. over, in fact, to someone else who we love because he loves Friday so much. Carl, I know you are as excited about these seven cities in seven days, baby. Well, I'm wrapping I'm it up, excited. right? Uh, but, you know, I'm excited it's too. It's going to be great. And also, uh, Jan, Brian and I have what they call a brimance. Uh, some people have bromance like you and I, Graham, but Jan, Brian and I, we have a brimance. But we have to focus on this beautiful country. Yes, do. and of course, it is also our month where we put the spotlight on our heritage and to embrace it, it's time to explore Mzanzi once again. Now, what we've done is on Monday, we showed you this blurry photo and we asked you to guess mm. where or what it is and let's see what you guessed on social media. All right, so first up, let's go to Victoria Lynn Roman Dolphin. Dolphin. Uh, Lionel says Fort Trekker Monument in Pretoria. Wow, very specifically. Anne Nikin saying it's the Southern African Large Telescope in Southern hashtag travel wise Mzansi. Mm -hmm. Hanno says it's the sunset behind the windmill in Club Mykonos in Langabai. Nice one. Southern Telescope popped up again from Malifu. And let's see if we have any other comments coming through. But it looks like they are all, a lot of them were spot on. It yep. was indeed the Southern Africa Large Telescope in Sutherland, also known as SALT. There we go. SALT, just like that. Now, this is the largest single telescope in the Southern Hemisphere. and is known as Africa's largest eye on the universe. If you ever want to be completely immersed in the stars and get to know our universe a little bit better, uh, then grab yourself a trip to the Northern Cape and visit SALT. It is an absolute must. You should put it onto your bucket list right now. And if you watch The Insider, that's where Grant Hines got engaged to Anvil. Uh, they got engaged uh -huh. there. But it's time for us to now reveal a new photograph because this is a game I think that needs to stay around. That's it has to. Mm -hmm. All right, so what's the new one? That's the thing. Let's right. see. Okay, that's currently on your screen. It's blurry for a purpose, for a reason. We can give you one clue. It says, I resemble one of the biggest mammals in the world. It could be a giveaway, but we're going to leave it there. We have to be trivial with you. If you think mm -hmm. you know where or what this is, then share your guesses with us on social media and brace yourselves because from next week, 5 to 11 September, Shot Left Travel Week will be offering discounts of up to 50% off on all local holidays. That's right, so keep your eye on shotleft.co.za for all of the deals because the great South African sale, it is almost here. You do not want to miss out on it. I love that, and you can book during that week for any time during the year, so don't miss out on that opportunity. Now, we've been loving the drama lately with a bit of a focus on Romeo and Juliet, which inspired West Side Story, which is the latest production this amazing drama team are about to take on. Dance Which way? That way! <laughs> hey, you! The office of Crush Me! Oh, 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 oh,
something special coming up. The Red Feds Cultural De um, Department is currently working on a major production titled West Side Story. And to tell us more about that right now is major production coordinator Natalie Pample, as well as faculty head for visual and performing arts, Lebona Silla, who will be touching on all things culture. Lebona, good morning. Morning. Let's start off with why is it important to expose children to various cultural activities? Well, I'd like to speak about my school where we're at it. Mm. Our school is very serious about collaborative teaching where we don't think about education in silos. So this, uh, having a major production, it gives the students an opportunity to try different things, um, build their creative um, thinking and have the, um, use their imagination to see beyond whatever that is just in the classroom. Mm. So through that, um, I think that's why we have it like from stage five up to great yeah, living music so that our children can actually get to, to embody these kind of skills. They are incredible. I have no words. That was truly a treat. Natalie, please take us through the process of rehearsals preparing for the West Side Story production. So the reason we chose West Side Story is because our children are passionate, as Mr. Silo has explained, about dance, drama, music, and the arts. And as a result, West Side Story is a culmination of all of these. 
When we started with the auditions with, um, with our children, we started w looking at our Broadway productions, and with the amount of children in the best of Broadway productions, you usually only use between 40 and 50 kids. We have incorporated 250 children to give them an opportunity to experience a Broadway show like this on our stage. So it has been a wonderful opportunity for our children, and as you can see with our backdrops that we have tried to build with them, we build ourselves. So wow. it's been a wonderful experience for ourselves and and the children as well. All hands on deck. Now, I have to ask, why do you think it's important to expose children to sort of like the understanding of worldly views and, you know, incorporating them in the plays and um, the productions that they are a part of? So with the West Side Story, it's actually a modern version of Romeo and Juliet, mm. which incorporates a social message. So it's all to do with things that happen in our daily lives, like fighting, violence, mm. racism. So as a result, it teaches the children a lot about their beliefs, values, creativity, and develops their imagination. I absolutely love that, Lemona and Natalie. Thank you guys so much for showcasing your talent with us here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. It has been a special way to kick off spring this season. Coming to you live from Redford House, Blue Hills, out here in Johannesburg, Gamalamgu Gusha Adams. It has been a pleasure kicking off this day with you guys. Back to you guys in studio. You guys were awesome, right? Yeah. 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 post-COVID rebuilding <laughs> phase, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's weird, but like, like the whole company's on one WhatsApp group now, and everyone's like, we've all had to kind of just yeah. band together exactly. and... I've, and uh, the, the whole time. Nourish your skin with Ingram's for men. Enriched with triple glycerine. For 48 hour moisture and no stickiness. New look Ingram's. Your skin, your brave. Introducing new Ingram's sensitive range to gently nourish skin. It's my feel good breakfast show. So this lekker rustig day is about to get even more rustig. Why? Because we're going to stand around a spiritual fire, a figurative fire right now in lieu of Friday coming up. So let's talk about some of the staples. Chakalaka, the original South African spicy relish. We love it. We've taken ownership of it. Goes well with just about everything, but especially bride meat and equally well with fresh bread. Are you making the link? Bry master Jan Bry now joins us in the kitchen to put the two together on an ultimate South African inspired Burger ahead of National Bride Day and Heritage Month. And I've got to bring in our little bride buddy here. Ah! Carl, get in here, man. Okay, Carl, not... but let's, let's start with the chakalaka burger so that we're done. And then, yes, and then we can have lacquer, some lacquer oil kale. into the pointy. Wait, can I get in the middle of you two tall boys? Sorry, I want, to be, in the, I want to be in the center To the olive everything. oil, we add some, some onion. Let me not interrupt the fluent speaking of rubbish. Of course, South African <laughs> people that's, think that's we That's why have, we stand around a bride. People yeah. think we have 11 official languages, but actually we have a 12th one. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's talking. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's our speciality. Yes, hey. yes that's the one who what, speaks fluently. But what else are you going to do? You know, the problem is, Jan, is the fact that you watch the bride, the fire is in front of you, and you don't know what you're talking about. And then suddenly yeah. somebody starts a conversation, and then they try to one up each other, and next thing you know, there's a conversation about nothing. Let's one up these carrots with the sweet <laughs> You better do that. There. I and love the so colors. There we going go. There. Yeah. And, and then there becomes like this, this underlying battle of who's yes. going to be the master briar. Don't you love that when you've got three or four master briars around? the fire 
how you settle into a rhythm. Yes. How you kind of, you know what your strengths are and what, not that we have any weaknesses around yes, the fire. Not at all. But you know what your lesser strengths are. This okay. is a medium strength curry powder, speaking of strengths. Is this the key for a chakalaka? Is the curry, curry powder, powder, what is the thing that makes a chakalaka a chakalaka? It's the seven colors you're adding to it. Because okay. a braai needs to be colorful. Uh -huh. Seven colors lunch, seven colors braai, seven colors in your chakalaka. So now we're adding some tomato paste in there as well. Beautiful. That's some fresh ginger, Looking some good. fresh garlic, and uh, lastly, salt and pepper. So that's the chakalaka. Now we just need that to simmer. Just Beautiful. And then, of course, the patties now. If you have any doubts whether your fire is big enough for National Bride Day, then your fire is too small. Add more wood. So if you in the studio have any doubt whether your gas stove is hot enough, it's yes. too cold. You put it on full blast. This is just 100% pure beef mince patties. And is like this that, and we can see them smoking. Is this not the crux with the burger? Don't overcomplicate. Don't overcomplicate. A patty, you should see it as a rearranged piece of steak. You want to take <laughs> beef, meat, you're just mincing it, and it's the same steak. Don't add onion or, yeah. or egg or even salt. You don't put salt and pepper inside a steak. You put it on the sides of a steak, and the steak is absolutely delicious yeah. with the sauce. So that's what we've got here. It's just a more tender version of a steak with a sauce on a roll. Yeah, otherwise, if you add anything else, it's going to become a fricadel. I mean, trying to do yeah, a exactly. burger. Yeah, you know what I mean? Exactly. So, and there's nothing wrong with a fricadel, but a burger patty is not a fricadel. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we are blessed to have such phenomenal meat here. Treat it with respect. Respect the meat man. The thing is, that animal gave its life for, yes. this, for this meal. Yeah, so so for make sure. a proper meal with it. No, yes. I absolutely get that. And of course, on National Bride Day, no discrimination. All animals are welcome on the fire. <laughs> oh, that's and, very and, sweet. And, you know, and lamb and cow and chicken and, and, uh, and pig is welcome. Yeah. The fish, yellowtail, snook, of course, ostrich is welcome at the bride If you fire. were going to do a non-meat, okay, because yes. Carla's been educating me on some amazing veggie brides. There are bride. amazing options, oh, definitely. What's, what's the ultimate non-meat burger, do you think? Well, obviously, you use some lentil, you use some beans, okay. some nuts, some rice, and you make a vegetarian patty. Nice. You can obviously, my go-to, if you want to make an awesome brine meal, is the baked bean bunny chow. So you make a baked oh. bean curry. Oh, and, a, my and it says easy. Yeah. yeah. So you make a baked bean curry and a poiki and do like a bunny chow, brine some millis with the chumula sauce, brine some oh. giant wow. mushrooms. They even make it easy for you. The yeah. big mushrooms are sold in supermarkets now with a sticker that says brine mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> so, a bright it's true, it is. It is. And he had to go to the top, of the highest level of government to get that gazette today. Yes, <laughs> yes. But he did That's it. That's the fine. thing. And, um, and then you do that with a bit of garlic butter, this giant mushroom, a bit of feta cheese in a roll. So, that's a super nice vegetarian Ooh. burger. Of course, butternut, beetroot. Uh, potatoes, onion, all of these things wrap it in foil yeah. or throw it into the coals as is and the, the fire and the heat just caramelizes fantastically the natural vegetable wow. sugars, that's oh, big I word. love that. Speaking I'm of caramelization, yes. how are our patties going here? What, what is your kind of guideline when you, oh. when you fry a patty? What should we be looking for? Super, super Glazed. hot and turn once. Every time you turn, of course, it has the risk of falling apart. Now, natural ground beef, pure beef, lean mince, sticks to each other, doesn't need other stuff, as yes. we said earlier, but there's no reason to tempt fate. So, uh -huh. only turn it once, super hot coals, as you would do with a steak. A confident briar turns a steak once, because you know why not? You know. yeah. yeah. So, that's obviously <laughs> how it looks when it's halfway done. Then, if... Uh, so a minute Assembly. from now, when we're off air, then, then we're going to eat We're going to eat all oh, four of This has been done right. by a very capable food stylist earlier. So this is rolls. You also toast the rolls, obviously, okay. on the fire. Then you get the patties in there. We can see our patties are actually bigger than these ones they made. Yeah. So make your patties bigger. Make them some, like the circle. No, make the circle look bigger. bigger because Carl's next yeah, to the that's thing. The, it's you know, actually, look here, guys, you're yeah. actually working with my patties. Oh, these are yours here. Those are all yeah, relative. The <laughs> so make the, make the patty bigger. Oh, that's beautiful. the chakalaka. And then a bit of sour cream always goes very well. So when you're doing chakalaka on your millipop, on your burger, 
it always is good to just break anything that has curry in it and there's a lot oh. of curry powder in the chakalaka cut through, that. So cut okay. through it with with a bit of sour cream if you can't find sour cream it means you had a fancy supermarket <laughs> then just buy the creme fresh same thing <laughs> different and same name fresh to, to look bougie yes yes um, exactly this is spectacular if you can join this man on his seven city tour over seven days mm -hmm. as we build up to the most important day of the year let's be absolutely. honest absolutely so Facebook at Jan Braai, Instagram at Jan Braai, and we're actually starting to go on TikTok today because we want to, we want the little kids to also know they must yes. Braai on Braai Day. So I've joined TikTok. I haven't posted on it, but I, I'm going to start today. But there's some other clown is already Jan Braai, so I'm real, real Jan no, Braai, real, real, Jan Braai. real Jan Braai on TikTok. On oh, TikTok, yeah. that's a it. week from now we must speak about. We TikTok. will definitely, yes, yeah. or even TikTok. <laughs> He's going to actually work as well. Jan Braai, thank you so much for joining us. And this is beautiful. The smell is good in here. But of course, I also smell some news that you need to see and hear from around the world. Going to eat all of them, actually. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, it's now 8 o'clock. Let's take a final look at those national headlines. Convicted murderer Oscar Pistorius has asked the courts to, be, to bring force on prison authorities to consider him for parole. The former Paralympic gold medalist is serving a 13-year sentence for killing his girlfriend in 2013. Pistorius shot Riva Steenkamp through a locked toilet door, claiming he mistook her for a burglar. Pistorius argues that he has already served sufficient time in prison to be eligible for parole and thus authorities should, took, should at least look at whether he could be released earlier. And staying with local news, people have been alerted and warned and wildlife authorities in KZN are making every effort to locate a pride of lions which escaped from the Mfula Wazi um, Wilderness Private Game Reserve in the Hluhluwe Mfulawazi Park yesterday. Now, a fully grown male was spotted on the road near Mflo and Ulundi by the motorist late yesterday afternoon. Last night, the pride was reported to be in a valley inaccessible to vehicles. Rangers have come across the carcasses of two calves. There have been no reports on attacks on residents. Moving to news beyond our own borders, Uganda has started administering Ebola vaccines to its soldiers who are fighting against rebels in the neighboring Democratic Republic of Congo. The exercise began last week and targets more than 10,000 members of the force fighting against rebels of the Allied Democratic Force. Thus far, 6,200 Ugandan soldiers have been vaccinated. The Ugandan Army Director of Public Health, Dr. Xavier, says the response from the troops have been good as they were aware of the Ebola threat. The exercise will also cover soldiers manning border posts with the DRC. And Queen Elizabeth will meet with outgoing UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson for the last time at Balmoral Castle in Scotland on Tuesday. A spokesperson for Buckingham Palace says she will shortly afterwards meet the new Prime Minister, who has to be appointed by the Queen in accordance with British customs. It will be the first time in her 70 year as monarch that she will not appoint the new PM at Buckingham Palace. The announcement of who will succeed Johnson at Boris, um, who will receive Johnson as British Prime Minister will be made on Monday. And concerns about mental health have grown in recent years with the situation exacerbated by COVID-19. Now, Cape Mental Health, a leading non-profit organization which provides free mental health care services and interventions, is tackling this problem head on by, well, by flying a kite. That's right, Cape Mental Health is encouraging children and youth to hashtag fly your dreams at the 28th Cape Town Kite Festival next month to raise funds and promote mental wellness. According to the nonprofit investment in children and youth in particular, helps prevent mental illness that can progress into adulthood. Now, young, old, and everyone in between are invited to fly or view kites at Mount Strand Beach in Cape Town on the 9th of October in support of the initiative. If you're not in the area, you can visit Cape Town Kite Festival's website to see how you can make a contribution. Well, on that note, that's where I leave your morning headlines. Let's take a final look at your sport.
Thank you so much, Sozo. Let's start with rugby. Not the best news, unfortunately, for Andre Pollard and Lucanio Arm. Um, they'll be returning to their respective clubs for further medical assessments. And that was after being ruled out of our next uh, clash against Australia down in Sydney. So both players suffering knee injuries against the Wallabies in Adelaide last weekend. That prompted the decision to send them back to the Leicester Tigers and Sharks, respectively, for further medical advice. And Alton Yankees and Peter Step to Toy, they will remain in camp, thankfully, as they are expected to recover sufficiently from their respective injuries as well, um, with uh, the last two matches still to play. And Jacques Nineveh said no replacements would be called up at this stage. Then exciting times for South African cricket. SA Cricket's new T20 tournament finally has a name in the form of SA20. And it's set to start in mid-January next year. So the league's draft will take place on the 19th of this month. And that's to put out the six teams with 17 players. <clears throat> Excuse me, 10 of which will be local and 7 international. From a match day perspective, the teams will follow the international standard of 7 local and then 4 foreign players format. And the SA20 has already attracted the likes of Liam Livingston, Joss Butler, Jason Holder, Rashid Khan and Moeen Ali to add to the list of world-class contracted players from the Proteus camp as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, I think I'm going to do this just about every time I say this uh, footballer's name. He is making his mark. Erling Haaland continued his blistering start to his Man City tenure by scoring a hat-trick again. This time inside 38 minutes as the Premier League champions absolutely demolished newly promoted Nottingham Forest 6-0. So Haaland has now scored nine goals in his five league games so far since joining City from Borussia Dortmund and has back-to-back hat-tricks to boot. That was after netting three in Saturday's win over Crystal Palace. Then goals from Gabriel Jesus and Gabriel Martinelli. They earned Arsenal a 2-1 win over Aston Villa as the Gunners kept their 100% start to the Premier League season alive. Then Liverpool, they needed a 98th-minute winner from Fabio Cavallo to uh, beat a very spirited Newcastle 2-1, while Spurs and West Ham played out to a pretty entertaining one all draw in their London derby. Then on to tennis, former champion Andy Murray is looking good. He reached the U.S. Open third round for the first time in six years with a four-sets win of an American wildcard entry, Emilio Nava. So Murray, who won the U.S. Open back in 2012, came out on top 5-7, 6-3, 6-1 and 6-love. Then Rafa Nadal, Diego Schwarzman and Denis Shapovalov, they're also through to the next round. Then on the women's side of the draw, crowd favorite Coco Goff. She overcame Elena Gabriela Russe, 6-2, 7-6, Madison Keys and Oncia are looking very strong also through while well, third seed Maria Sakari she was dumped out of the competition well, that's a wrap of your sport for this Thursday morning let's get one last look at the roads Thanks a lot, G. Let's take a peek at the roads first. Now, Reservoir Hills, Durban on the M19 highway. There is protest action and roads are closed between Dunkeld Road and that is on the N2 highway as well. Please use an alternative route this morning. Now, going to Germiston, Johannesburg, there is an accident on the N3 northbound at Van Bieden Road. Uh, the off-ramp is closed at the moment. Please make sure to add a bit of extra travel time to your journey to work this morning. Now, Victoria in Cape Town, of course, there's a con congestion on the N2 outbound before Victoria. You can expect delays. Uh, that's a wrap of your traffic for now. Be safe on your way to work this morning. Let's take a peek at your weather. Starting off with weather news, the Nelson Mandela Bay municipality is warning residents that the potential for day zero still looms large in the metro. Uh, this despite some excellent rainfall in the main catchment area in the Langkloof in area in August, which has seen the city's main supply dams recover to an average of 16.34% capacity. Water and Sanitation Director Barry Martin says the bay's water situation remains constrained. He reminded residents that the city is still under significant water restrictions implemented by the National Department of Water and Sanitation. These restrictions limit how much water the municipality can draw from the system. Martin said, and I quote, we all need to continue to reduce water consumption by adhering to 50 litres per person per day. Currently, our seven-day average is 274 megalitres per day, which is 44 megalitres per day over the target. We are also facing an increasing level of vandalism, which affects electrical supply to reservoirs, negatively impacting our ability to produce consistent supply 
supply for all, end of quote. So all the best to you if you're on that area. Uh, and when it comes to saving, I know you can do this. We got your back. Now for our final weather update, we have Owen Granger from Lakeside showcasing this wispy cloud, a be beautiful view floating in the luminous sky while he starts his morning with a chai tea, Nochals. I like it. Now, Earl van Amsterdam I captured a beautiful ocean shot with the sun radiating through the clouds out in Port Shepston. Uh, Luzuko stopped on the side of the road on their way to work to snap the sun peeking behind the mountains of Grahamstown. Absolutely gorgeous. Finally, we have Zinte Tafeni from Cirrus giving us a show of spring as the flowers begin to bloom with a setting of sunrise hues. Keep it coming, please. These are pictures of positivity, and you are one WhatsApp away. 063-408-8863. We'd love to see your sunrise and where you're seeing it from as well as we take a peek at your temperatures across the country. Now, Polokwane, as always, let me start with you. Five is your minimum, and you jump up to 22 degrees Celsius. Bombela, seven, rising to 23. Pretoria, nine to 22 today. And Joburg, also 9 for you, 21 degrees Celsius is your maximum. Let's move over very quickly. Let's go to Mai Keng, 8, jumping to 24 degrees Celsius. Klerkstorp, 8 to 25. Kimberley, you can expect 24 is your high from a low of 12. And then Bloemfontein, blooming nicely to 23 uh, from a low of 5. Richards Bay, 22 is your maximum, and that is from a low of 14. Peter Maritzburg, you wake up to 10 degrees Celsius, jumping to 24. Uh, Durban, you top at 20, and you start your day at 14 degrees Celsius. And Tata, 27 is your high from a low of 12. East London, over to you. 18 is your low from, uh, and of course, you jump to high of 23. Craddock, 11 to 26. Nice and summary. Habecha, 15 to 24. George, 11 to 29 degrees Celsius today. Quite warm, so keep hydrated. Get the sunscreen out. Cape Town, 12 to 21 today. Worcester, 7 rising to 28. A minimum of 8 degrees Celsius in Sutherland to a high of 23. And Uppington, it's always you. Going to summer before everybody else. 31 is <laughs> your high from a low of 17 degrees Celsius. That's a wrap of the weather news, the sunrise views, and the temperatures across the country in your feel-good breakfast show. And remember, keep on sending those sunrises to 063-408-8863. Aw, Graham, you shouldn't have. Oh, Thank no, you. Man. No, you deserve it, so you <laughs> deserve it. Nothing says spring like a beautiful flower arrangement, and wow. Oh, listen, this is wow, 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 but obviously when it comes to beautiful flowers, that also means it's season for some people's allergies to flare up. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so we'll get into some hay fever remedies in just a moment and tell you how you can get your hands on these gorgeous flowers and how you can arrange them. We'll see you now. I can make my day. Defeat your mucus monster, Mucophys. Loosen mucus and phlegm for clearer airways. Brought to you by Pharma Dynamics. Uh, doctors, give me a mic. Test, 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 one, two, three. One, two, three. Test, 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 one, two, three. Hot, cloudy day. Ready? Who's that for? Please, uh, Who's that for me? Okay, be a bit louder. Okay, all right. Have a seat on this area here. That's your spot. And I just want to make sure.
free to be you. Live, work, play, sleep, allergy free with Allergix non drowsy. You know, it's the start of spring month. It's your feel-good breakfast show. You're on S3, and I feel like it's so important for us to not only celebrate this beautiful day where the flowers are in bloom and things are looking good, but there are people suffering too, especially when the pollen counts rise, those itchy eyes come through, wheezy chests. Allergies can spark a whole bunch of skin issues as well, and these skin allergies can cause rashes, itching, burning, redness, bumps, hives, and swelling around the skin. But there's no need to panic because we have a dermatologist here that knows all about it. We have a professor. Ranks Lithuania, and he's here to tell us uh, everything we need to know about these allergies and what can be done about them as well. So, Professor, it's an honor and a pleasure to have you. I must just note that you are probably the most stylish professor, <laughs> professor we've ever had in the show, uh, just to let you know. But we, we, it's lovely to thank have you. you, really it is. Thank you, thank you very much. So let's start. Allergies. You know, these are things that, I mean, I've dealt with my entire family, but then, of course, they manifest on the skin as well. And I want to focus on that for a second, Professor. Skin allergies, you know, uh, what causes them as well? I think that well, I mentioned pollen now on the nose, but now we've got skin allergies too. So let's talk about what causes those different skin allergies. There's a number of things that cause skin allergies. Uh, the most important of all of them is that your skin is designed to prevent things from getting into your body and from important things from getting out of your body. Yes. So generally, people with skin allergies tend to have a genetic predisposition where their barrier functions and the ability of their skin to prevent things from getting in or getting out is impaired. Yeah. So people who tend to be atopic, for example, have a genetic susceptibility to allergies, and that would be asthma, hay fever, and eczema. So those things tend to coexist together. So some people are genetic. There's All a genetic right. predisposition. And then some of the things are environmental. So if that barrier function is impaired, then you are more likely to get things into your body that gives you allergies. Remember that by definition, an allergy means that you have an excessive response yes. to things that normally you shouldn't be reacting to, or even if you're supposed to be reacting to them, yeah. your response is excessive. You so the biggest problem, so the, mo the most important thing is that is the environment yeah. and then the genetic predisposition. And then there's the other things that we do. Your skin has evolved over millions of years to protect everything inside. And over the last hundred years as humans, everything we learn about, we do it in excess. Our job is now suddenly to remove that very important top layer of your skin. We scrub it out, we clean it out, we remove it. It impairs on our barrier functions that it tends to make us more susceptible to allergies. Well, that's a very good thing to note when you are yeah. scrubbing those things out. But you mentioned something like eczema. Yes. I want to also throw in psoriasis. Are these yeah. actually skin allergies? No, psoriasis is slightly different. Right. In fact, in terms of how the mechanisms of how they develop, they're in two opposite ends of the spectrum. Okay, okay. In psoriasis, you sell mature too rapidly. Yes. So basically, it's almost like um, a five-year-old who's grown so quickly and looks like a 30-year-old and is expected to behave like a 30-year-old. They'll still behave like a five-year-old. Uh, okay. So the cells grow too quickly. Therefore, functionally, they are immature, so they cannot do what they do. That's psoriasis. Uh -huh. So that's where the problem arises from. And that's why they shed scale and leave trail of scale wherever they are, wherever yes, yes. they go. In eczema, on the other okay. hand, it's when you are responding excessively to things that are in your environment. So, I mean, you covered a, a broad spectrum of how these things happen, the triggers, mm -hmm. etc. but now the management thereof, because, you know, there are a lot of triggers for skin allergies, and now we have to have some sort of control. How do we navigate that scenario where we are faced with the environment, but, of course, we have to do something to protect ourselves and stop those triggers? Yeah, so, so the important thing is that you can choose who you hang out with, you can choose who you marry, <laughs> you can't choose your yeah. folks. So if you're genetically predisposed, there's nothing that you can do about that. But importantly, uh, the exposures are important. So, yes. for example, people with eczema are always told to wash with bland soap, aqueous cream, and such things. It's not that they necessarily uh, stop the eczema, but it diminishes your exposures. So if you're going to get a okay. product with a thousand different ingredients, yes. the likelihood of you getting an allergy to one of them increases 
quite considerably. On the other hand, you also have to try to protect your barrier functions. And one of the yeah. things that we started seeing, and most people will identify with this, is what happened with COVID and sanitizers. Sanitizers, yeah. alcohol, is an organic solvent. It removes the oils from your skin. And part of that barrier function that you have on your skin is the oils that are there, which you wash off with excessive amounts of soap, and then the same thing happened with alcohol. Therefore, people yes. suddenly started getting eczema and allergy from the, all of those things. So the idea is make sure that you protect your barrier functions and you minimize your exposures to things that are most likely going to give yes. you allergies. And then there are specific treatments, obviously, yeah. once you've got eczema. Wow, sir. This is fantastic. And, you know, I'm having a good time listening to all of this. But, of course, when it comes to being brave, and I think I want to just... just focus on this for a second you know what does brave mean to you and with regard to uh, you know of course Adcock Ingram OTC the sponsors of brave having to you know just contribute to what is a celebration of pharmacies for you as a professional in this field a dermatologist a professor the brave concept what does it mean to you it's it's look I think <laughs> To me, and I'll start from the beginning, the biggest problem with humans is that whenever something comes up, we go excessively. Yes. Yes, ago, we, we, bugs were so bad and yeah, we yeah. need to eradicate all of them. But now we know that we need a balance between the bugs. The same thing applies to what you need to do to your skin. What's most important is that everything in moderation is always better. Yeah. How much you wash is always you don't, we don't want to, we don't want to clean and wash your skin excessively. Yeah. At the same time, you don't want to smell so that when I walk in, <laughs> the paths open and everybody yes. gets out of my way. So, so part of what I understand about it is that you've got to be able to protect your skin. You've got to be responsible. You've got to be able to use medications that is appropriate. But one of the things that we often do is going back to discrimination against people with this. Mm. The, you would remember, for example, the classic example of the beautiful girl who was on the top 30 of Miss South Africa yeah. and what happened to her skin. Yeah. And I'll take that concept of brave is that it's part of what we are born with, some of us. We cannot control your susceptibility to eczema, your susceptibility to allergies. Companies like your sponsors will help you to manage yes. that, give you medication that will make it easier and better for you to function. But in the same breath, there is the social issues that are there where you find that people who have these skin conditions that can eczema apart from functionally impaired not being able to sleep half asleep at school most yes. of the time the kids the children get we've got to have that social embracing of them that we need to help them as much as we can in all aspects of it so to me I'll take it a little bit in a different direction that it's a very holistic approach you've got to take. And I love that direction as well. Yeah. This is why you are the professor for the job. Professor Lechluenia giving you a bit more about skin allergies and, of course, the info that you need. Now, September is National Pharmacy Month. Self-care is a human right, and your pharmacist is your partner. Support your local pharmacy. They are the pillar of your community. And this is brought to you by Allergix, non-drowsy, in proud association with Adcock Ingram OTC, sponsors of Brave, building communities, one pharmacy at a time. We've been long in the game. Healing South Africa, one allergy at a time. All the sneezing, runny nose, itching of nose and throat, we've left no stone unturned until finally South Africa recognized us. You've given us the courage to continue to do what we do best. Live, work, play, sleep allergy-free with Allergex Non-Drowsy. Ask your pharmacist for the full allergy range. Brought to you by Adcock Ingram OTC, sponsors of Brave. Oh, well, listen, if your allergies stop you from smelling the flowers, then how about you taste the flowers of spring instead as we welcome the season of flowers, blooms, and warmer days, longer days. We're also going to celebrate the fresh fruits that comes with the season. Now, our fruits of the forest of Volovans bursts with spring day flavor, and they are so easy to make. Myself and Tando, we're about to bring out our inner French because yes. I feel like when French people speak, they leave leave out quite a few of their letters. Mm -hmm. So we're about to make volumans. 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 We are taking it to France today and we're feeling Francais. bougie and we're just making all the 
you know? Everything's just <laughs> going to be elevated and it's going to be magnificent. Yes. So we're going to get started here. So it's a pretty straightforward recipe, super, super simple, which is what I love. And it's a great breakfast treat as well. Oof. So we've got some cottage cheese. We've got some cream cheese. And that's always winning combination, your yes. cottage cheese and your cream cheese. And then some honey. And then, of course, you're going to also use our clover fruits yes. of the forest. And it is, a, it is a snack that has a creamy taste and also crunchy fruit. And it is a source of 10 vitamins. Now, fruits of the forest with cereal is great for morning commutes, ready to enjoy anywhere. And you can use any fruits of the forest dairy snack flavor for this recipe. And you're busy creating the mousse. Yes, this is a mousse. And this is what's going to go on top. Oh. once they've baked and what you're going to prepare for me is the puff pastry okay so, so we've got a puff pastry yep. rolled out two cookie cut well one cookie cutter and then one little um a small basically if you have a small cookie cutter you can use that or if you have like a little bowl Let's like see how this, many we can, can fit yeah. in i have a feeling I might just miss out but that's okay we'll do it this it's way the effort that counts Mm. Try to always try and save the dough as best as possible. There so we now go. we've got the one circular motion and now you're just putting a little indent. Yes. Okay. And this is just going to give it more dimension when it bakes. Making it more pretty, more, you know, display for a cafeteria or a bakery. Just at home. I mean, I, I love the idea of just pretending, you know, you're all fancy, oh, you're treating yep. yourself. <laughs> Have a little high tea. There we go. And then... You're going to place those on the baking sheet and bake those in the oven for about 10-15 minutes. And once they're baked through, you're going to top them off with our mousse and some fresh berries. Fantastic. So now you are busy making our mousse. And like you said, this really is an easy recipe. We have it available for you on our website, expressoshow.com. Yeah. And I'm going to add these to our baking sheet and those go into the oven. Correct. Until they're nice and crispy. And we've got some here that came through. Lovely. And then we're going to have fun with our mousse that you've made using our clover fruits of the forest. And we have gone for the mixed berries yes. today. And then we're just going to fill those. There we go. Oh, look at that. And then we're going to top it off with some fresh, fresh berries. berries. I've been dying to get into these <laughs> berries. I mean, I love yeah. seasonal fruit. It was amazing during winter to enjoy all the citrus. Yes. Now I'm looking forward to all the berries, all the, berries. the grapes coming through soon. I love summer fruits because it's all the, the nice smoothie things. Oh, all the fun things you can pop in your smoothie. And just add more. And if you want to get your hands on this delicious recipe on our berry volavant, volavant. <laughs> you can get it on our website. Expressoshow.com. And if you're not sure what we're talking about, I think, you know, if you want to mispronounce it, mm. Volovance. Vol Volovance. Yeah. I'm a Volovant. Are you a Volovant? I'm a Volovant since I'm a Volovant today. Uh, but but no, but I, I, I'm enjoying, <laughs> I'm really enjoying the volavants. I feel like this needs to have three little fruits on it, but there you go. Very easy recipe, super delicious. Oops. Tando, I'm going to actually tuck into one of these. Please do, and let me know. I will let you know. I'm going to grab a little bit of a, of course, the mousse is a hero here. Mm. You hear the crunch? That sounds good. Amazing. Well, the recipe is available on our website, expressoshow.com. Enjoy. Your <laughs> Fruits of the forest from Clover just added real cereal crunch. A symphony of fruit, oats, seeds, and granola crunch. <laughs> Fruits of the forest, real fruit, real cereal, real taste. Made with love by Clover. Hey, hi, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Better without the hair in front? Is it okay better without the hair in front? Can you hear me? All good? Okay, cool. My mouth is so dry. Would you like some water? <laughs>
Do you own your skin? Do you wear it bravely, even when others try to dim its glow? Does it represent your strength, your heritage, or does it express your brave and unconditional love? New Look Ingrams, your skin, your brave. It's my feel good birthday show. September and of course we are so excited because spring has sprung and what better way to celebrate than with Woolies flowers. Now product developer for Woolworths Horticulture Beverly Rod she is here to tell us more about these lovely spring blooms bringing color to our studio. Beverly, Beverly I'm in seventh heaven here yeah, if there's one beautiful. thing I love is treating myself with flowers and going to Woolies is normally my go-to for the most beautiful roses yeah. But September means it's the start of spring. So what can we expect from Woolies regarding flowers over the next two to three weeks? Well, this is definitely our favorite time of year too. We have some beautiful seasonals available, like our beautiful snaps, uh, ranunculas, anemones, uh, freesias. We've got um, also from an indigenous perspective, we've got stunning pin cushions with their bright and vibrant color. Um, and then we also include a lot of seasonals into our bouquets, like for example, our tutti frutti with a freesia in it, for example. We've got um, our rose and African tulip, as well as our rose and African bride, so blushing bride, which is really beautiful. So a lovely selection on offer. And I love the mix that's going on in some of the bunches. What else, what other exciting items does Woolies so, have? We've got some beautiful Italian ranunks in stores, and then we've also got these beautiful butterfly ranunculars with their beautiful soft pastel color um, and their beautiful shape. It's just something so it's exquisite ones, yeah. and really unique. Yeah, oh, yeah they're really beautiful. I love this. Now, I know we've touched on the flowers. Can we talk about the plants? What are some of the plants we can expect to see in Woolies over the next two to three weeks for spring? Sure. So we've got some beautiful seasonal flowering plants, like for example, our lavender, it also comes in a white variety. We've got um, hydrangeas, which are also stunning. Um, These ones over here. Yeah, so I'm really terrible beautiful. at identifying my flowers. <laughs> and we also have our arum lily also coming in a variety of beautiful colors. So we really try to bring um, spring indoors um, now that winter is hopefully on its way out. So yeah. <laughs> now I love buying when I go visit a friend, you know, you, you know their personality type, whether they're a bunch of flower person or whether you need to buy them a little plant. For someone that wants to look after their plants, what's the best way? If I gift you a plant to look after it and to make sure it really lasts, it goes the distance. Well, we've got a, an incredible range of uh, fertilizing products. So we've got um, potting soil if you want to repot. We've also got lovely little watering can and mister. So it really makes the, uh, it fun and easy and accessible for the customer. I love this, this little yeah, watering, um, the I know. Yeah. It's like the, that's the one in Afrikaans <laughs> and I've never ever in my life seen this orchid mister. It's beautiful. This is unbelievable. <laughs> so you just yeah. like simply yeah, just mist, spread mist. out. Because yeah. I know <laughs> orchids one of those things that doesn't like a lot of water. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. amazing. I <laughs> love the selection that you have here in front of us. Yeah. Which are your favorite? Well, we've also got some beautiful green plants. Um, we've got our Calanthea network. We've also got our Alocasia. Um, we've got varieties like your Stingray and Zabrina. So they're absolutely stunning. Um, Orchids also come in their variety of colors, so it's really just, I can't pick a favorite, it's like picking a favorite <laughs> child. <laughs> I need They're to stunning. also ask you, because you're the perfect person to ask, because whenever I buy roses from Woolworths, they last ridiculously long. What is it about the Woolies rose that just lasts for weeks on end? Well, we have an incredible post-harvest treatment. We also choose varieties that have gone under uh, great um, testing. So we make sure that we've got the best on counter. Um, and we also maintain our cold chain throughout the stores so that when, by the time it gets to the customer, it's in the most pristine conditions. So. I love that. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> and I also, you know, you mentioned earlier, if you want to replant your plants, you've got some fertilizer. How important is it to give your plants that plant food that it needs? It's really important. And I think this time of year, you know, the, the plants are coming out of their winter dormancy. So it's really great to repot them into uh, larger pots if you have fresh soil. Um, and we've also got some lovely little bark and moss. So you can also just restyle at home. So, so it's great to 
to have that variety and option that you can style and do it yourself. I love that. And any tips and tricks to make a bunch of flowers last a little longer when you buy it from a store and you're now about to put it in your own little vase? Definitely. So always make sure your vase is uh, beautifully clean before you start and then cut the stems about uh, one or two centimeters. Um, always use your flower food and keep make sure the flowers are away from draft or sunlight. Um, and yeah, just uh, enjoy. <laughs> oh, you know what? Flowers are meant to be enjoyed. Um, Beverly thank you so much for joining Pleasure. us today and sharing these beautiful flowers we're going to be keeping them in our studios to make sure we have that spring feeling throughout and to get your hands on these lovely blooms you can visit woolworths.co.za but i would highly encourage you just go into the store and pick yourself a beautiful bunch of flowers because you deserve it you absolutely do <laughs>
Catherine, this is where it comes to bear for me when we look at everything under the kitchen sink. These are the items we need to buy every single day. How are you using these items to push back and beat inflation? Well, people need these products every single month. It's kind of a grudge purchase, but they are very particular on the brands that they choose. And we have them here at Game. Your Sunlights, your Omos, your Aerials, your Domesticas, you name it. We've got your favorites at more for less and at low price locks and at some never be beat items. So you can certainly save without fail month after month, Graham. So my trolley filled up very quickly with some awesome spring essentials. We start with the outside. So I've got some potting soil and I bought myself a brand new hose because the deal was just too good. And when you get a deal as good as this on Bry briquettes, you take it. All of these incredible items at such low prices mean that I really can now do the right spring. I think I've made my point. I hope you are now ready to do the right spring and get down to your nearest game store and please capitalize on these amazing price lock items. And don't forget about the price beat promise. Challenge them, put them to the test. If you find an item cheaper anywhere else, they will knock 10% off the difference. So go and put them to the test. But most importantly, bring on the new season. Spring is here, baby. <laughs> No, there were, there were moments where you looked like Ryle, like the certain hey. angles when you turned. It, it was a look like when the angle when it was like yes. shooting down. That's it. Just made my chest look big. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> now we got game. And it is a new season, and I, I cannot tell you the amount of deals that I discovered that yeah. I didn't go there to look for. You've got to get there. I'm telling you right now, game are the cheapest for daily items. Indeed. Guaranteed. So go and check it out for yourself and hold them to that price check promise. I promise you, you will score. Do the right spring. <laughs> We're on a mission to help people take charge of their space and inspire them to express their uniqueness through paint, furniture and decor. I want a space that's inviting. It's just basically made for you. I'm open to experiment. Because I love change. I'm sure it's going to be very exciting. Old meeting new. Zanzi Room Rescue. Rescue my room. Please. No, man, this is ridiculous. No, this is just a total, total makeover. That's Mzanti Room Rescue, Thursdays on Afternoon Express from 6 to 7, brought to you by Plascon and Rochester. <laughs> Testing, it's spring day and we've got even more reason for you to blossom today. You guys are spring in your um, I'm very close to you. Man, oh, well, I mean, I don't mind. And, uh, so they sent you? So Addie um, sent us a message to say because they require... Take lashes higher. New Revlon Eyes Wide Open Mascara. The curved brush volumizes and lifts lashes vertically for a wide-eyed lash look. Hemp seed oil conditions for healthy looking lashes. Go higher. New Revlon Eyes Wide Open Mascara. It's my feel good show. Welcome back. It is 
your Feel Good Breakfast show and we're in the beauty room because spring day and we've got even more reason for you to blossom on this beautiful day. The Beauty Festival, it is back and you can now shop at Woolworths and here to tell us all we need to know is our beauty editor, Nox Mafu. Nox, it's so great to have you it's here. It's good to be back. Oh. Spring day, it's a wonderful day to talk makeup. <laughs> well, it's a wonderful day to talk makeup but also a wonderful beauty festival yes. sales. Now at Woolworths, you can get 20% off two selected beauty products. Correct. What are you going to add to your basket? It's very hard, right? Because <laughs> I can choose between like fragrances, color products. It really is hard. And skincare, which you know I mm -hmm. love so much of. But you can do this up until the 4th of September, which is great. So two selected products, gift sets also, which is amazing. But in my basket, I really had to choose between my favorite makeup items. So I've got the Hydro Lipstick here, Ooh. which I love just for a pop of color, just to add a bit of dimension to my outfit. And then, of course, the Glow Palette, which is such a big favorite here. I love the way, also, because we're moving into spring now, I love to glow and illuminate a lot. So that is one of my favorite things to put on. But then, of course, I will always have my primer. We know that W Beauty is amazing in that it's test, It's not tested on animals, approved by Beauty Without Cruelty. But this is amazing because it's a medium lightweight um, foundation. And it's long wear, which is incredible. Exactly. Gives you maximum cover. Exactly. And that's what you want. If you're going to yeah. be a full day out, you want to make sure your beauty products last. Absolutely. And you can pop it in your bag, which is super easy. But of course, you would start off with a primer, which is really great. But from a skincare perspective, also, I love the kind of um, radiance range. Mm. And this one is great because it's got an S, um, SPF 20, which is wonderful. Um, and also because it evens out the skin really well, removes dark spots. So this is really the go-to girl when it comes to trying something that will help your skin even through the change of seasons. And that's brilliant because you know we want that hydration, mm -hmm. we want that radiance that comes with it. Absolutely. And this really gives it for you, the brightening day cream. And it's also got a little built-in SPF, which, which I wonderful. think is fantastic. Yeah. I never leave home without a little bit of sunblock on. So it's always a bonus when Thank your you. SPFs, your day creams have that in as well as this long wear cover foundations also got a little bit of SPF built into it so Absolutely. unbelievable so all of these are part of the beauty fair 100% so you can have a look go to your favorite Woolies you've got until the 4th of September on selected fragrances color products oh. and so many other skincare products so have a look when you see that pink sign you know that you're in the right direction get yourself two things that will maybe change your life and, and you know what the pink sign is what you need to yeah. look out for because the beautiful thing about this is if you've been eyeing that one fragrance for mm. quite a while I think to get 20% off when you buy two beauty items is gonna be unbelievable absolutely I'm gonna give that back to you before Thank I you. take it <laughs> Nox, this was incredible I love talking all things beauty with yes. you and the beauty big save it is here and you can get 20% off selected beauty products the offer is valid like Knox said the 4th of September there are some T's and C's that apply but you can shop it at Woolworths in store online and on the Woolies app. Time high tea. Beauty abounds. The blossoming glory of it. And this is brought to you by Golden Cloud. It is going to be epic today because Lamingtons are a nostalgic childhood treat. At least they are for me. And a marble Lamingtons, uh, they are actually perfect. The combination of the Golden Cloud vanilla and chocolate cake mix, they're going to blow your mind. They're light, fluffy in texture and are guaranteed to be a win in tea time. Here to spill the tea time is Chef Tando. You see my pinky is up and ready to go. Yes, it is indeed. Oh, yes, Chef Tando. No, it is indeed a spring time. It's, it's of course high tea. High tea. Talk to me about a marble because I know my Lamingtons mm. from my, oh, my my late grandmother. All right. But this is marble Lamingtons. It's marble Lamingtons. Yeah. I, I, my, it's not coming. It's not. It's, it's going to get there. It's though. Gonna it'll, get it'll, there. It's too early. <laughs> <I'm crying. laughs> But yes, marble right. lamingtons. So we're making marble lamingtons using the vanilla cake mix, okay, as well as the golden cloud chocolate cake mix. 
Are yes. you breaking some rules here? Mixing some things up here? Is that the it's vibes? It's breaking eh? rules. It's creating new rules. I like the new it's rules. It's creating that you have new rules made. because life is too short. All right, so while you get that opened up, uh, when it comes to breaking rules, I mean, the rules are quite simple, right? The Golden Cloud Vanilla and Chocolate Cake Mix, they make it super easy to use. Now, you can bake up your favorite cakes and cupcakes with a simple addition of eggs, milk, and oil. Done. And have perfectly baked goods ready in 30 minutes. The versatility of Golden Cloud Cake Mixes allows you to explore your creativity. You can also try this recipe using the newly launched Golden Cloud, wait for it, Carrot cake mix i'm tasting it already i don't know why i feel mm -hmm. it because i love it's... carrot cake and cream cheese icing oh. and okay i'm gonna stop myself Carrot. now winner. so this is what you've done so far you've yes. added and this is the great thing about golden cloud you just throw in throw super in super easy throw in shh ba ba done done oh, okay <laughs> Yes, Perfect. all those sounds. So I'm going <laughs> to ask you yes, talk to, me. to just throw in our vanilla cake mix into our prepared... No problem. Oh, you've already done this one? Yes. You're so organized. And Listen. this one I can... Oh, look at that. This there is, we go. This is beautiful. So you want to throw that in, okay? Yes, please. This is great. And it smells so good. Like, really, this is the vanilla vibes. It's, okay. it's giving. It is giving. It always gives. That's the great thing about this. It is giving. So you're going to throw that in? Throw that in, the whole batter in. All of it's going in. There Love we it. Go. All of it. You're doing Love great. It. Thank you. I, I appreciate you. When you when you when you compliment me like this, it's affirmation. It's it makes okay. Makes you feel like I can be a chef. I mean. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank Anything you. for you? Yes. <laughs> keep keep it up. I want to make it happen. All right. We there got we that go. in there. And then. Beautiful. I'm going to add now our okay. chocolate Let me one. Just Let's do the. Do the. The business over there. Then I'm going to add the chocolate one. And, and is this where it gets fun? Is this where you start swirling yes. things in? Oh, yeah. And then I'm going to do, let's do three scoops of that. So just are you so just going to leave see. it yeah, so that, as is? As is. You're not going to, th that's the thing. Because I know sometimes you can take something thinner and you can do a little swirl. You could, I know yeah. you use it with icings and that sort of yes. thing. Could the same thing apply here? Similar, basically. And then what I would do. That's so good though. Is leave some of this, I'd even leave half of this and pour the one half into a chocolate one and one into a vanilla and then like mix it and then you get like different marbling. I love And then it's just like really, really extra. You have no idea how <laughs> beautiful. And maybe this is a, a beautiful microcosm of mm -hmm. South Africa blended colors together to make new beautiful things new beautiful delicious things yes thank you and then here then you're gonna make the glaze for me the chocolate glaze all right how do I do that icing sugar cocoa and some water all right so in any can I make a well yes you can make I'd a like well. I'd like to make a well because it's important to loosen up do you want to go cocoa first shall we do cocoa yes, first please. dry ingredients first there we go so going cocoa and then I'm going to just mix that in yes. over there Just now. so it's well combined. Because I know for a fact that this thing is going to stiffen up and then it's going to be, the party will start, which is and great. And the, the thing, you don't want it to be too stiff because you want to like dip the cake immediately yes. and then have it come out in, and then straight into the coconut. Incorporating as we speak, chef. You're I doing hope, amazing. I hope I'm going to be fine, chef, because this is like the, the, the true color new I'd test. I'd hire you. Would you? I would. Just, is it based on skill? I mean, sometimes you don't you need know? to be the most skillful person. Really? No, sometimes you just need, you know, just the personality. Listen, this is what I need in the kitchen. That's it. This you need a bit of personality, a there bit of that. Go. Okay, and there we go. It's done. Look how glossy and beautiful that is. And then I'm going to ask for your fingers. All right. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> then we're going to dip that in. So where do you want to dip it in? So, like, basically, you want... Yes. Let's make a mess, because that's what we should do. Dip, dip it, it in. in. Okay, and then... Fully coated. Fully coated? Yes. Wow, thank you. That for your fingers like what the, you're working okay <laughs> and then into the coconut thank you so i love my job i really do and, and now, then and then and then and then and then properly now, coated can everywhere. i give you a word of advice yes. use one hand for the coconut for the <laughs> and the other hand for the dipping and then you'll be fine or a use little a kitchen kitchen tongs also work tongs, too. Tongs, fork. Oh, that, yes. okay, but that does look beautiful there look at that and that's your hands as well that's your hands, My hands do amazing things. <laughs> they Thank make so Lamingtons look like this. Wow, that's, that's the <laughs> biggest compliment that I've ever heard in my entire life. Thank you so much. Shoo, we Can get breakfast and a show. This is the lovely thing. Okay, I'm going to finish. You, you know, you can probably finish those. Remember, <laughs> if you want to get any of these in your hands dirty, Golden Cloud has a now very, very, 
um, and of course exciting competition with a weekly celebration of a spring high tea. So five lucky viewers stand a chance to win 10,000 Rand from Golden Cloud and a Kenwood appliance. So bake with the best. Simply create a bake using Golden Cloud products and share a photo of your bake on the competition post on the Express of Facebook and Twitter pages, of course. Or you can just do WhatsApp as well. That works too. The WhatsApp line number for this competition is different. Listen properly, 063-814-2300. And tell us what makes you and your high tea creation the best. Make sure your photo includes a Golden Cloud product. And don't forget, hashtag high tea with Golden Cloud. Entries close on 28th September. T's and C's can be found on expressoshow.com. One more time for the fans. Yes. While we are doing this. And get your hands dirty on this one and win with Golden Cloud. Woo! Good morning, Expresso family. So we're just establishing Zoe's the winner for today. Okay, yep. you won everything. You even beat the game's master. Well done. Well done. <laughs> you are too good. You're too fierce. Kind. You're the paragon of competitive nature. We absolutely love it. These magical fingers of yours, my Thank friend. You. Thank you so much. I heard Tundra say you have magical fingers. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, you heard that on, on national television. Thank you very much. This is That's why beautiful. I love my job. Did you have some of the shortbread? <laughs> well, actually, you know what? Now that you say that, I am going to have that. Thank you. I love you, man. I yeah. love you. So, yes, it is a first of spring, spring day. And spring is all about those new beginnings, that transformation. So we put it to you guys this morning. What are those goals for the new month and the new season? And we ask you to please share some voice notes on the line. If you don't have it down on speed dial, 063-408-8863. Let's hear what you had to say. Good morning, Expresso family. Morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, my goals for this month is my skin. I've been um, taking care of my skin, especially my face for the whole winter, and nice. I can see the improvement. So my goal for this month is to actually um, because of the sun that is going to come out, I just want to look at my skin and, 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 and keep on taking care of it until summer. Mm, I love from That's a good goal. Yeah, I've got to love the skin you're in. Invest. Invest right? in, skin. in the skin that you're in. We've got a voice note from Abigail. Let's take a listen to what Abigail had to say. Good morning, Expresso. I really like it that everyone is happy for this season. It is the happy, happy, happy season ever. You know, actually, everyone is happy today. I just hope so, you know. And the goals for this season, I would like to say, starting hard, focusing in great things, nice. and not giving up, you know, Hi. doing and working hard. I'm just hoping that everyone is wishing that 
and for me is that I should write a new poem for the season, you know, yeah. I love it. Stay focused. Let's yes. squeeze in one more voice note just so I can continue to watch Good this. morning, yes. Expresso team. My goal is to clean my room and read my Bible Aww. and to stay positive more and to make my drawing, clothing, I no. don't know how to say it, come true. I, love I hope you have a good day, Expresso oh. team. <laughs> stay healthy and stay warm. Bye. Bye. I love that. Do you know the word he was looking for? Manifest. Yes. I'm gonna manifest. I'm gonna manifest. manifest. I'm gonna manifest a beautiful. We should manifest. Cerise Pink. Thank you so much for, for blooming with us today. Or blooming uh -huh. with us, excuse me, on your feel good breakfast show. We really appreciate you today. We've had so many great uh, you know discussions as well as dermatology, psychology, we covered it all. It's beautiful. We yeah. did. Um, I've got to say uh, thank you so much to all of the guests that joined us this morning, especially our panel, uh, our panel groping uh, <laughs> with a very, very difficult subject this morning. And I'm glad that we can take the edge off. Today is Suicide Prevention Day. So we've yes. put SADAG's details up on our screen. Please use them if you need to. And never forget you are not alone. We are here for you. And our high tea. I love Cheers. you guys. Well done, so you're the winner. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, here's to 31 days of rewarding ourselves for the awesome job we do every day of the year. Made with love by Clover.